Toby then Leroy, ready to deploy. Had a hit her with a little girl, Elizabeth, that was a decoy. Better have about me, boy, okay. Leroy and Tobin, all to the show, man. Still some sauce with the show, and till then it's half moon open. Sometimes go taste like a snowman. No proof, I'm a lie about a boat, and no proof. I always wanted him, I never hated him, I never traded him, and if I did, I never traded him. You know what? What is a star like under the city, the driver's side fly? Go to the large, so many more. Ten in the more, never a bar. Hey, ten in the more, two to the P. Nothing to you, but it's something to me. Hands up as ever, and cute as can be. You can watch us on YouTube with me for free. Hey, this one time. This one time for the text. This one time for the phone line. Whole time, wonder what they gonna do next. You know, I, I just wish you guys would stop the quibbling. Ah, morning, everybody. Tobin and Leroy here with you. Five sixty WQAM. Hello, Leroy. What's up? How are you, buddy? I'm good, man. I didn't know you were uh going in today. Yeah. Not that. I, not that I was. I, oh. <laughs> hey, as long as I got the uh, people on the roof, because you got to keep them in notice because it might well, sound. No, uh... It's not. It's not even that. Hmm? When you have people working over your house, if something gets broken, damaged, or whatever, you think they're gonna call you and tell you? Mm -hmm. Okay. I don't know. You know, especially when you got stuff falling off the roof, you got, you know, all kind of stuff going on. So, you know, I had to, you know, I had to ask when my air condition broke because I only had my air condition for a year and a half. Hey, did you guys cover the air condition while you were, you know? So, yeah, you, you got to make sure that uh, keep them on the toes around and, and you got to park way out in the street. Let's uh, get to some headlines here brought to you by the new Palmetto Ford Truck Super Center. Why buy your truck at a car store? Palmetto Ford. We know trucks. Ho <laughs> ho. One game run. Of what? The Marlins. Oh, yeah. Well, oh, my goodness. That thing was over before. Like, I got home from uh, from my son's jujitsu jiu class and it was over. I'm like, the game was two hours. Let's give some props to Brian De La Cruz. He had the team's only two hits. Only two hits. Brian De La Cruz. <gasps> Everybody else player. hitless. Uh, they were closer to no, a no-no than they were to threatening. I mean, I guess the good news locally because uh, Nestor Cortez, highly his own for the Yankees, you know, goes and pitches his first eight-inning shutout of his career. But, you know, I'm sure everybody at home would have liked to see somebody else besides Brian De La Cruz get a hit. Juan Soto went deep yesterday. And, uh, you know, the Marlins' disastrous run continues to start this season. We will uh, talk to our boy Peter Pratt from Locked On Marlins today. We will uh, get his thoughts on oh, everything. He's gotta be on mi that. He's got to be miserable. I can't imagine he feels great. The, Could uh, you imagine following a team on the other side of the pond? Yep. And, and this is what they give you every night? Yeah. Yeah, it's tough. Um, but AJ Puck's on the hill today, so oh. we got that. He's a stopper. He's a, he, he's a stopper, Dan Stop Day. What? Oh, my a good friend of mine over at 26 Degree Brewing in Pompano Beach goes, he's my new favorite player. I'm like, why? He goes, because I bet against him all the time and win. AJ Puck the entire way. I mean, he's you would have been million dollars. It, it's well, tell your friend, right? Hey, Captain Obvious, you pretty much could have faded everybody. Yeah, but so how's AJ Puck? They're one in nine. Yeah, but there's a certain thing about AJ Puck. You just feel like you you got no chance, mm -hmm. no chance with him on the hill today. And the, the the problem with the Marlins right now is you can't do anything different because uh, with the pitching because you're waiting on guys to return. Yeah, what do you and, do? Right, what are you gonna yeah. do? It's uh, it's it's a really rotten situation that they're in right now. I tell you what you do. You announce that you're not gonna ex bring the coach back, the manager. Yeah. Back. yeah, that's that 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 news leaks. It's a fantastic, fantastic way to go about things. Um, by the way, did you guys see in the middle of a yesterday's game that Juan Soto signed an autograph in the middle of a Marlins at bat? Good, makes you proud. Just great. If you want to know, if you feel threatened, Juan Soto's out here doing signings in the middle of uh, Luis Arias. Hey, 
what? Is it the Simpsons where Mike Tyson or whatever is beating up on Homer and he starts <laughs> talking to like a fan and they're like, come on, break it up, break it up. That happened. Uh, that happened with Floyd Mayweather. Floyd Mayweather, I believe, was asking for the score of uh, of a fight, uh, score of a football game during one of his fights. I want to say it was one of the Maidana fights or something like that. But he like he goes over to uh, Kellerman and he goes, uh, what's the score of uh, Ravens Falcons? He just wanted to know, wanted to keep it updated. I think it was like a playoff. It was maybe playoff time or something like that. Oh my goodness! I'll see you if know, I can find it. Clip. It couldn't it have was, been playoff. Time. You even you should know that. Why? Because the Ravens and the Falcons play in two different conferences. Yeah, yeah my, my bad. Whatever. I don't remember. <laughs> I don't remember the, sorry, I don't remember the team exactly. <laughs> well, I'm just saying. I'm just saying. <laughs> like asks. <clears throat> or, whoa, dude. Yeah. Uh, let's see. Floyd Mayweather asks for score during a fight. I can't find it. I'll find it. Don't worry about that. Anyway, other news. Uh, we have a national championship in men's college basketball, UConn. UConn they, is. They, do, they just dice through everybody in a very. The sneakiest, the sneakiest dominant team you've ever seen in sports. Like uh, they dominated in the. In the uh, and March Madness, they dominated, and and you just like UConn really? They were Co- like that all year. Couple okay. of cool facts: last year their margin of victory was twenty. This year, twenty three points margin of victory. Yeesh. And in the past two tournaments, the team that played them the closest, Miami Hurricanes, Miami Hurricanes. in the Final Four. Yeah, baby. Believe it or not, a little bit of a moral victory there, huh? A little bit of a moral victory, dude. If you say it yeah. multiple times, doesn't mean it's true. Uh, the, yes, the UConn, they won a very hapless men's tournament that I think, would you say like UConn's dominance and then like the dude from Oakland? Like that felt like those were the only moments this year. Oh, no, DJ March Burns. Madness. DJ Burns. Jr. DJ Burns, true. Old DJ man Burns. body twisting and turning. And- DJ Burns, who's going to leave for the NFL. He's not even going <laughs> to. Well, right. He's, yeah. He's like, oh, you know what? I get attention in football. That being said, the women's tournament, they came out with the numbers, Leroy. 8.7 million viewers they averaged for the uh, national championship. I was, and it peaked at 20, what, 24? 24. 24. Yeah, I was one of them. Crazy. Was it and, the most it's, game it's, since 2019? You know, and you you know what's crazy is that this group of women going into the, the uh, WNBA is going to spark the same type of interest. It is just like whenever you've had a draft in the NBA where you had guys playing in the final four and you wanted to know what they were going to do at the next level, right? You It, it, it kind of sparked interest. Mm. Um, the NBA draft right now, a lot of us don't even have interest in that. We we want to know who the hip the heat pick. We really don't know much about the guy that they pick, right? And you know, with the influx of that's why one of the reasons why football is the best draft is because most of the guys are homegrown, right? Baseball, you got guys all over the world. Hockey, guys all over the world. Um, basketball, now you got a lot of Europeans, right? So you have no idea who these guys are. But football, you've heard or seen most of the guys that get drafted. I do know one interesting name in the NBA draft this year. Hmm? Can't guess? No. If you're playing along at home, Leroy? You going with that giant Sasquatch from Purdue? No. Oh, Bronny. Bronny James. Yeah, he's not going to be in the draft, though. Uh, He's not going to be in the draft. Uh, He's gonna, he's gonna, he's gonna be with the Canes. Okay. <laughs> no, I don't know. Well, there, there was like a lot of stuff coming out yesterday about his defense. It was like, oh, he defensively, you know, look, it, there's somebody could stash him on a second round pick. Like that definitely could happen. Here's probably. the problem. It, 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 I mean, if sure if you're the Lakers, what's that? They're gonna draft him, put him in the G League. Uh, they should. Mm, they should. Could have a package deal in play though. If you have uh if you have Bronny James and Bronny James going to Sioux Falls, like I mean, like he's, he's gonna get better. He's gonna get better. We've seen that process a lot. The G League has oh, uh, with the heat. Yeah. 
I don't know if every team can claim that. Yeah, not every team can. Not every team can. That's why they, they they don't they don't have that development ladder like the Heat do. Speaking of the Heat, they're back on the hardwood tonight against the Atlanta Hawks. Duncan Robinson out back injury. Same back injury. He looks like it. He looks like mm-hmm. he needs that time off. Uh, Seven thirty is your tip. Six fifteen preheat with Solana and Tommy Tig, and uh, would expect Tyler here to go back to the starting lineup if with the yeah. looking out. Oh, with yeah. uh, Terry Rozier being banged up. No, I think Terry probably stays, and I think they probably just put Tyler in Duncan's spot. Terry's questionable for tonight. I saw he does have a neck thing, but um, don't you need to spread that out though? Spread what out? Terry and 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 Tyler are very similar in what they do to generate points, and and you have a problem getting points with all of the units. So why would you play those two together? I mean, I'm just I'm just asking. Like it just seems like to have two guys who can if they're really serious about keeping Tyler on the bench and that's gonna be a thing that they're gonna do into the playoffs, um, then I suppose you could probably start Caleb Martin if you wanted to. Uh yeah. It, it's just a it, it, it's a it's a weird dynamic that they have because they have two bona fide scores. Um but I almost think it's counterproductive to play them at the same time. You well, they're probably, they're, they're probably going like it was an odd thing that Terry didn't play um in the fourth, fourth quarter. quarter. Yeah. Like they're gonna they're gonna have time on the court together regardless. No, I know, but 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 again, having them in crunch time, right? Having them in the fourth quarter where you can stretch the floor and have two guys that can re- create their own shot yep. is a lot different. Then starting the game with both of them, and then you're going to have a period of time where neither one of them are in. It, look, Spo's not uh, a stranger to doing that. If he likes that, he's going to keep somebody in a role that he'll go with somebody else in the starting lineup. He's done that in the past before, so I wouldn't be shocked if he doesn't start. But I also yeah. wouldn't be shocked if he does start. Okay. Take a quick break. Back with more to this. WQ.
All right, so really cool giveaway today. Every single hour of today's program. What are you pointing at, JFig? Why not? The computer. Oh, all right. Well, you when you went like this, I thought it was like you you can't hear me. Jeff, you should just say it on the air. I can't hear you, but I have the headphones on. I'm sorry, okay? Just I say it. Like, we, you act like, to your you act like sometimes you do this thing where, like, you're trying to be very subtle for everybody, but it, just say it on the air. Like, we can get it done a lot faster. Okay. I looked it up, Leroy, by the way. It was so Floyd Mayweather. He, uh, this was back in 2005. So, you know, really before Money May blew up, he was taking on Henry Brussels. Do you want to know where this fight was? Where? Down here, the American Airlines Arena. Really? Okay. And it was a championship conference championship weekend that he was fighting this, and uh, they're talking about, I guess, the uh, the games. And he can, he looks over to Jim Lampley and he goes, "I like the Patriots," and then just starts pummeling this guy, <laughs> knocks him down. And then in the midst of it, then the NFC side, he goes, "I like Michael Vick" because the uh, the Eagles and uh, Falcons were fa- facing off. So. There you go. That was uh, that was Floyd Floyd Mayweather back to his uh, his tricks back in the day. By the way, he went. I think he went one for two on that. He picked the Patriots correctly. They beat the. Uh, they uh, they ended up beating the the Steelers that year. So eh, he was good. And then he gets the knockout very the uh, fight. very shortly thereafter. Well, yeah, he won every fight. Never <laughs> lost. Never lost. That is true. He's never lost. 50 and 0, and then uh, some weird exhibitions then and thereafter. Although it is strange that the Conor McGregor fight counts against his record. That's really? a weird counts Yeah. Against Conor McGregor's record? Or count, counts for his record, I guess. Yeah. I watched that fight in Seattle outside of a bar through a window because it was too crowded to get in. Was it? Yeah. It was nuts, man. There were so many Irish hey. people in Las Vegas. Oh, my God. The hooligans. The hooligans were, uh, were, were all about for that hey. one. Hey. Hey, that was one of my biggest paydays for the fight for the fights. Yep. Yep. Oh. It was something. Speaking of paydays, somebody needs to pay. All right. And that someone is Scott Foster. Okay. Because they come out yesterday with this last two minute report. And what do you know? What do you know? Critical calls against the Miami Heat, missing Tyler Hero fouls on his three point shot. And of course, because we all have eyeballs, that Miles Turner play. Shouldn't have been a foul. And so the last two-minute report comes out and basically goes, yeah, hey, Miami Heat, sorry about the most critical loss of the season. Our bad. Uh, well, you could you say bastards. That. You you could say that, but but there was a lot of basketball that could have avoided that mean meaning that much. Yeah, you want to know that what else would avoid that? The refs doing their job correctly, Leroy. You know, how many games and how many titles and how many things in this world are are carried about by one possession games yeah you could say that he could have gotten off to a better start fine we could do that or they got to where they were and ineptitude didn't allow them to go where they should have gone no 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 no. i don't like what you're doing there i you know right away when you just go it's such a dismissive thing you think you're going to tucker me out like some kind of toddler listen i don't appreciate that let me let me explain something this has you you talk about referee accountability all the time but when it comes to the miami heat you're just like Oh, no, well, too bad that's not, no, that's it not. Is. It's exactly no, what you're doing. No, that's not what I'm doing. What I'm saying is this. You know the officiating has been garbage. You know this. So if you put the game in the hands of officials that you don't think have been very good, then you might get hosed. So try to avoid that at all costs. Like, I I just, like, yeah, the officiating was bad. Like, yeah, I saw it too. But there's one or two ways you can do it. Try to avoid the situation or keep leaving it up to the hands of the officials. I mean, leave obvious things. So so people should just be allowed to cheat. They should just be allowed to do whatever they want. The officials could just be like, oh, sorry, our bad. I didn't see that. You know, my my, I I was blind. uh, I was blind to you guys stripping Miles Turner clean or... TJ McConnell going out there and just slapping Tyler Hero upside the head. Oh, my bad. Sorry. You shouldn't have been in that position, though. You started off the uh, the game down 12. All right. Oh, my bad. I didn't realize that. Uh, I, 
Oh, I'm sorry, official. I didn't realize you guys got off the clock because we got off to a slow start. So that's why they lost because the official. Yeah. Actually, okay. mathematically, it and is why they lost. Does it make you feel better? No, it makes me feel worse. Okay. Then, it makes like, me feel worse. And there's like at this point, like, what are you going to do? I want Scott Foster. Like, to after every game to complain about the officiating does nothing to improve your situation. I gave the accountability all yesterday to the Miami Heat. But when I have on paper them admitting their mistakes and that no crimes are answered for, I want something to happen. I don't know what like that what? is. Like what? I well, want Scott ahead. Foster Give to be punished. I want him to be punished. We should put okay, him in and, a dunk tank. And here. For each NBA Finals game. And for you the, should allow Tyler Hero to throw baseballs at him so he can get wet. Okay, for the purposes of all of that, that doesn't change the win-loss record, which is the most good. important oh, thing. Listen, revenge feels very good. All right. I got you. Like, I just think how long they, – they got a game tonight. Yeah, they got a game tonight. Which, which is more important than reading a two-minute report from the last game. Didn't even need to read the two-minute report. I had the two-minute report. We call my eyeballs. Yeah. These guys are sitting out here like a bunch of jackasses. Oh, sorry, Spo. You should have kept your challenge. Ah, how about – you don't want something? How about this? Why can't anybody just come down and be like, Bang! hey, guess what? We screwed that play up. Fix it, dude. I got to hold on to challenges. Maybe you lose your challenge because these guys don't know. They're, they're, they're a bunch of horses asses out there. Don't know how to call a damn game. Idiot. Sitting here. They're always, they always want to stick their nose into people's business. But then all of a sudden, once you need a critical call, where are they? Nowhere to be found. I, I agree with Dr. Tobago. They should stop the two minute report. I don't want to know if they can't fix it. Like what what is what does the two minute report do? Does it know. change does it change the game? No. My only thing is it's probably just a permanent record like they do here at work. When you do something wrong, they put it in your quote unquote permanent record. So if they ever need to we have a permanent record. Do I have a permanent record? Do we have permanent we records? Have I didn't even realize that. At work? Yeah. Yeah. You sure? Is this like where I get the Odyssey points from? Yeah, it's it's the opposite of your Odyssey. It's the opposite of Odyssey points. Can we can we can, here? Can we get out of trouble by using Odyssey points? You should be able to. Doubtful. Like it should by, like my son gets a homework pass every uh, every like five homeworks that he does, he gets a pass. Oh. You should be able to get that. It's more valuable yeah. than your Odyssey points. So no, if, you, yes. if you say a no no word and get called in the lens office, you can just hit him with like ten Odyssey points. Yeah, I get I get immunity. Sorry. No, you can't buy anything without like 50,000 Odyssey points. So when they give you 10 of them, it's like, mm. okay, I'm getting closer. I can get a decoder ring for the amount of Odyssey points I have. But maybe it's just on the record for the referees so that when they review them at the end of the year or when they review them every once in a while, then it's just there so they know. How do we continue to have officials like Scott Foster, though, who continue to put his beak into, into people's books? Chris Paul hates his guts. All right, it's actively known that like he has he has it out for Chris Paul. He doesn't know what he's doing, and yet and yet everybody looks at this and they say, "Oh, when this guy is officiating a game, you know you're getting the series extended. He's gonna he's gonna make it all about him." What kind of officiating is that? That we know this stuff about a, about, a, about a certain person. I would say this. In some situations, it's the fastest turtle, which means that. There's a lot of bad ones. He's the best of the bad. Ugh, I don't agree with that. <laughs> really? Yeah, the ones I don't know. Every, every night, I t every night I turn on the TV and watch NBA basketball. They're complaining about officials. Every night they got these show pony officials. Who you're get not the only team riches. that you're not the only team that feels that way. And if it's that many teams, it's safe to say the officiating is bad. It's ridiculous. So while you have. <clears throat> While you have a name, right, there's other teams that have names, too, that maybe those guys do mostly West Coast games or those guys are predominantly doing their games, and they're saying the same thing, but input another name. But, like, this sport in particular, I guess you could say baseball, too, but only, everybody only knows that one Bobo, uh, Angel Hernandez, who, I mean, is the worst of the worst. Everybody hates his guts. If um, we hear 
If we know the official's name, that is a problem in itself. Agreed. Okay. Hockey. We all love hockey. Well, I'm just saying, like, it, the fact that you know the guy's name, because I got to tell you, in all the years I played in the NFL, I used to call them all blue. Hey, blue. Because that's baseball, right? Yeah. But I was just, hey, blue. W- what are we doing well, here? The answer to that? Yeah. yeah I just, mm-hmm. like, I didn't know if it was the ref, the umpire, or whatever. Hey, blue. Like, it wasn't like I wasn't trying to degrade him or nothing. That's just, you know. And And I would go talk to him or whatever. I never had, you know, a problem because, I mean, dude, I've, in my whole career, I probably only had three penalties called against me, yeah, right? Mr. So, two shoes. huh? I said, Mr. Goody Two Shoes. No, I was the guy who's getting the brunt of the penalties put on him. Late no hit. No wonder you're sticking up for Scott mask. Foster. I'm not sticking up for Scott Foster. You're sticking up for him, dude. No, I'm not. No, I'm not. No, I'm not. Well, I'm just saying he's the he's the fastest turtle. But like, what is this sport? Yeah, right? Like, we, we we have we have to do audits of these guys every single game. Then there's like all these the, the, this talk in the middle of the season. We changed the officiating rules, and the middle of the game scoring was too high. We're getting duped. We're too stupid. So now we have to let more stuff go because we don't know how to call anything properly. What is this sport? If what is that's the case, I would get more upset when they call ticky tack files. Than if they let guys play. Right. And so if there's a pattern, whatever that pattern is, anything against that pattern, that's what you should have a problem. Yeah, but with. We know who the tricksters are. We know who the guys out there who are trying to who are trying to cheat. They go by the names of Why James are Harden. They trying to cheat? Jalen Brunson, Trey Young. These are the guys deceiving. People don't go, and now it's affecting everybody because now Jimmy Butler can't get a damn call even though he's throwing his neck at the rim. And now it's like, well, what's the point? They're not going to call anything. Well, keep because in mind, we who else do jobs. didn't they say the same thing about – um, who was it the other day who said, oh, no, that was about Brunson. Yeah. He wasn't getting any files called. So you're not alone. Yeah, but it, he's he, he flops. But uh... – He's a flopper. Like, you're not alone. Every one of these tiny Everybody, it, listen, if everybody has the same complaints, mm-hmm. then it's being officiated fairly, whether good or bad. I need Eric right? Spolstra, I need Eric Spolstra to step up to the plate. I need one of his classic do not find me rants, and I need accountability here. Okay? Again, if everybody is complaining about the same things, then at least they're consistent. Yeah, but and but all you know, want, all you want, good, bad, or indifferent, is you want the calls to be consistent. That's it. No, I want them to be right. No, you, I don't want consistent. Get the calls right. I don't need to when they when they when, they when they when they when they favor you. Right. So you yeah, you're, you're upset when it favor even if it favors you, you'd still be upset about it because it's not it's the right call. It's not the right call. Depends. Is it the right call? No, it's the wrong call, but it favors the Heat. No, I wouldn't like that. Oh, so you're you, upset. you have never the come. You, of the you, game. Wait, 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 wait. You have never. I've ne- well, as the, long as I've known you. Tell me when the Heat have gotten away with one. Me, oh, they get away with them sometimes. What are you like, Mark Cuban back in the day with Dwayne Wade in the 2006 finals? No. That cry baby. It, listen, all you want, and 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 this is why baseball players get thrown out of games. They don't care what the strike zone is. Just make it consistent on both sides and we'll adjust. That's it. That's it. If the other team is getting calls that you're not, right, and the same infractions are occurring, then call them. If you're not calling those infractions, then don't call them when we do them. It's as simple as that. You have to be able to. Yes, it is. It's not, though, but they don't do that. So you're saying, if I'm correct, yeah, you're saying that the Heat are the only team complaining about these things. I'm not saying the Heat are complaining about these things. Well, what I'm, I'm saying- telling you is, first of all, they got screwed against the Pacers royally, royally, and and people's only answer to that is well, you should have had a better first quarter. It's like the lamest excuse ever. Like the deadline is the deadline. The deadline is the end of the game. 
if I rightfully was was cheated out of that, if I was wrongfully cheated out of that, then consequences should be had. And instead, it's just like, you mm, should have started better. What? Who, 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 who? Hey, if a paper's due on a certain date, don't tell me that I should have gotten it done uh, or I should have written written more words if, if the dog ate my homework at the end of the due date. It's ridiculous. Hold on. You really use that excuse? I'm just telling you. <laughs> the due date is the due date. I got to be by the end of regulation or the end of overtime whenever whoever has a score that leads. And if I'm getting screwed out of it by many points, yeah, I'm going to be pissed off about it. I don't want to hear about, oh, oh you should have so, done better in the first quarter. Are you, are you saying that all the N1s were unfairly given to them? No, I'm not saying that. That uh, Because those were rightfully earned by the Pacers. Okay. Did I See, this is why you're Peter Pan, and I can't have a conversation with him about it. Because I am very much arguing two things that were agreed upon by the league said to be wrong by the league we goofed and you want to sit here and be like nah but you shouldn't have been there in the first place what who does that listen this is my thought process on this if you have that much of an issue with officiating don't put the game in the officials hands because you're going to be disappointed yeah, but every right. NBA game, it gets tight at some point pretty Right, much. right, right, it, right. Would you like to have those games, Dan Day, be determined by people who are competent and can actually do their jobs? I'm sure you would, wouldn't you? But nobody, every, listen, if every NBA team has the same problem, then at least it's consistent. No. <laughs> Not like this. Okay. Take a break. Back after this.
All right, welcome back. Tobin and Leroy take you up until two here on the program. We got a pair of heat tickets to give away every single hour on the show for the regular season finale. So at the end of this segment, I'll give away our first pair of tickets to Heat and Raptors on Sunday. Heat are back at home tomorrow. Luca in the building as you have the Dallas Mavericks in town. Final three games of the regular season at home. Uh, just got to know from the Heat, Leroy, that uh, postseason tickets go on sale tomorrow at noon. So uh, I don't know. <laughs> now it's very up in the air. We don't know when those uh, the, those games are going to be and what the matchups are going to be, but they will go on sale tomorrow at noon if you want to get the jump on that for uh, your Miami Heat playoff tickets. The Heat uh, will have them go on sale tomorrow at noon. And so check that out. You can purchase those, those tickets at heat.com or ticketmaster.com. So be on the lookout for that, everybody who is into the Heat playoff run. Marlins, they uh, lose again yesterday. They dropped to 1-10 and ten on the season, 7 nothing. Well, the only the cool thing game. about yesterday's game, you didn't have to invest a lot of time. It was over quick. Nope. Two hours and one minute was the, uh, was the final score. And uh, it was it was dubbed as uh, Broward versus Dade, Jesus Lazardo and Nestor Cortez. But uh, well, Jesus Lazardo got uh, beat up a little bit in that one. He gave up seven earned runs in that game, and uh, the Marlins' struggles continue. The only person to get a hit for the Marlins yesterday was Brian De La Cruz. Two hits for him, zero for the rest of the team. <laughs> Brian Zero. De La Cruz is having a good season, though. He's my favorite player on the Marlins. He's so. been a nice little player. He led him in RBI last year. Uh, he's been a decent Marlin for his career. Like I kind of, I don't think people thought that he was going to be like this much of a staple yeah. this entire time. <laughs> I don't know what that says. I but... don't know what that says either. But you know, here we are. Yeah, here we are with uh, this Marlin season that is uh, slowly unraveling into crap. What has been the bright spot so far this year? There has it been. been. Brian De La Cruz, maybe Jake Berger, Max Meyer got his first win ever the other day. Are those the highlights in 10, 11 games? You want to call them highlights? You use the term highlight very loosely. I've been looking for something. <laughs> no, I don't think they're I, – I, I don't – yeah, I guess Max Meyer because he was supposed to be a top prospect. That's probably it. <laughs> Jake Berger getting off to a nice start is nice. He's hit a couple burger balls. Yeah, he's got a what does he got? Three on the year. That's not bad. Yeah, yeah, whatever. I mean, I mean, I'm reaching a little bit, but Luis Arise had a four hit game the other day. Yeah, he. You figure he's due to get on a tear. You know, like that that guy's not going to be hitting, you know, 180 the whole year. So I would imagine Luis Arise getting going. You would expect that. Um. But no, man, there hasn't been a whole lot of uh, oh, Avi Garcia 0 for three yesterday down to 154. But I don't, you know, don't hurt his feelings, everybody, by booing him. He said he understands why people boo. <laughs> Look at the stat line. <laughs> Ridiculous, dude. It is crazy though. You're seeing like all these people that, that there's a lot of outrage going around with all this uh this the injuries in baseball that are crazy right now because you have just a rash of people just getting elbow injuries. We saw this with Yuri Perez, unfortunately for the Marlins, who I guess went under the uh, the knife officially and is uh, now on his men to get Tommy John surgery. But man, everybody seems to have a theory, Leroy, from pitch clock to not being allowed to use sticky stuff. I saw Verlander's brother the other day who was just saying that pitchers are trying to throw too hard all the time, and that's why it is. Yep. So everybody, like everybody wants to hit a hundred. Everybody's trying to hit a hundred. Everybody's throwing crazy hard to you know too much too too yep. often. That's why you ever notice the the guys who throw 85 to 90 that that throw a lot of junk pitch longer? Yeah, I don't even know who does that anymore these days. Like whose style is that anymore? Like like an old school uh Levon Hernandez or a Greg Maddox. Right. Man, Levon Hernandez would throw you some garbage up in and late in his career. I'm not talking about I love you, Miami. Like but guess what? Hey, I'm talking Old I bet you right Washington. now, right now, he could give you 200 Hernandez. innings. LeVon Hernandez? No, he can't. Right now. He's like yeah. 50. Right now. No. He can still give you 200 innings. No, he can't. Yes, he could. What are you talking about? This is Did like you the, see his last couple of years? No. He was, I don't... Innings, he was an innings eater. He was an everything eater. <laughs> he did do that. Hey, 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 hey. 
Everybody looks at me. It was not me. This it time. was not me. Mark it. Fat shaming. Levon Hernandez last pitched in the major leagues 12 years ago. And I still bet you he could give you some innings. No. Why no, he can't. Can. Doesn't throw it hard. He He's his career 50. thrown at 80, 83. You he want his at no, hold on. Let me just say you want Levon Hernandez out there like Charlie Huff. He could give you, I bet you he could get it to 80. You think he's here to junk it up, throw number junk balls, and and he could give you some innings. I, no doubt in my mind. Innings? Yes. But like you don't know what the results of those innings are. You think like he's gonna be successfully like keeping it to like four runs a game? Yeah. I, I'd say that they won't be knocking him out. Uh, they won't be hitting 473 he's gonna yards. Be getting, he's going to get tattooed. Yeah. Meatballs no, left and right. Yeah, come on. No, see, you guys are caught up in guys who throw hard and not guys who are true pitchers of the baseball. Leroy, he's 50. Don't care. This is what's going to happen to everybody who thinks Tyson is going to beat Jake Paul. This he is what's going to happen. To. He's not. He has He's to. old. Hey. He's too old. I'm telling you right now, the There's art no of pitching has left the building. And that's why everybody's getting Tommy John, because they think the most important I, thing look, is throwing a hundy. I don't disagree with that. That the, that people have, you know, that there's there's definitely hey. an epidemic with all these pitchers blowing out their arms, trying to throw, you know, the throw the radar gun into a, into a tizzy. But that doesn't mean Levon Hernandez at 50 can come in and give you innings. Hey, the Marlins are one and nine. Could he do any worse? One in 10. The guy, one in 10. The guy, wait. The guy who's leading the way, or who pitched last night? Lazardo. Lazardo. It was over quick. So it was a I'm six just, inning, like fifth. Yeah, he game. got he got tattooed. Like they, they, they I'm, was I'm just saying, I'm just saying this. Had to be with how fast that game went. You give me a 85 mile an hour junk baller, and at least they won't get solid contact on the baseball. Mm -hmm. Okay. Okay. Second time, second time through the lineup, maybe a little uh, shaky. Yes. Leroy yeah. wants he wants to he thinks the Marlins should zag where everybody else is going. Hundies, he's like, you know, you go get Mark Redman, you go get Levon Hernandez, you get all these guys who are just like throwing yeah. nothing but garbage at you now, all the time. I got to tell you, love a crafty left. I, I, I would be terrified if one got hit back up the middle. Oh yeah, <laughs> undress him like Charlie Brown. <laughs> We'll so, take a break. But, but I'm telling you, man, like there, there's a lot of pitchers out there who throw a hundred, a hundred and one mile an hour straight ball. Mm -hmm. And it's all timing. And guys are knocking it all over the, the country. So they ain't got the ball has no movement. Yeah, but you would agree that at least Levon Hernandez needs to use some grease or something like that to move the ball around, you know? Oh, no, he's going to pat it down, and he's going to need about a minute between every pitch. He's going to get searched every <laughs> inning. <laughs> New rule in baseball. They can grandfather you in. He doesn't have a pitch clock. They did do that. Use, he can use sticky stuff. They did he that can... for Tim Raines. Tim Raines was allowed to go no ear flaps on the helmet. <laughs> so there you go. Maybe maybe Leroy's on to something. Let's bring Levon back for – a 10 day contract. You know what? That's, you know, they should just do nostalgia day for the Marlins. You just every day, instead of old timers day where you play a game before the game, just have the old timers play in the game. I'd be for that. We just need the pitchers. Hey, you need, no, you need right now the art of pitching, right? You need crafty pitchers. Everybody wants like second stint Al Lighter on the Marlins. Yep. Al Lighter. <laughs> Oof. Kevin uh, Brown. Take a quick break. You but might first, have to help them to the mound. If you guys want to go to <laughs> walk them out, walk them out. <laughs> if you want to go to Heat Raptors right now, caller four to the contest line 305 567 0560. 305 567 0560. Caller four to the contest line at 305 567 0560. We'll get themselves a pair of tickets to Heat Raptors. The regular season finale coming up. It's an afternoon game this Sunday, so be warned on that. One o'clock start for your Miami Heat. But if you want to go, call her four to 305-567-0560. Hour two up next.
Tua, 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 tua. Tongue of Iloa. Not to a tag of Leoa. A for effort. Dolphins quarterback. Tua. It's our Tua. It's our Tua. Tua. Tua, Tua, Tua. Tua, Tua, Tua. Chris Sims can go to hell. Tua Tonga Bailoa. Dolphins quarterback. Daddy loves you guys. Our Tua with Tobin and Leroy. Check the history of food. Our Tua of the program, ladies and gentlemen. Tobin and Leroy here with you. Let's get to our headlines brought to you by the new Palmetto Ford Truck Super Center. Why buy a truck at a car store? Palmetto Ford. We know trucks. We will uh, talk about the uh, Marlins rough start and the Skip Schumacher story, which was uh, pretty shocking that that came out so early in the season with uh, Peter Pratt coming up at the end of this hour. But let's get to our headlines. And um, UConn, national champions, beat Purdue. 75 60 so was that their sixth sixth all time yeah i i can't i can't uh, believe how a team at the collegiate level has been this dominant the last two years and going into march madness we're like eh, 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 eh. like we're not even like i don't think anybody even acknowledged them right like we should have i think we should have looked at i mean just well, I mean, there weren't good games. There's, you know, it's right. the overall games. interest in what UConn was doing should have been greater than it actually was when they just did something that hasn't happened in almost twenty years. Yeah, I get you, but like, look, you need a uh, sports is one of these things where, like, yeah, domination is cool, but you do need a, a little bit of adversity, and I think that there is something to like if you're steamrolling everybody that easily. It can, uh, it, it can, it can wear on. It, it can, it can be tough to kind of captivate people. I, I know, but, but I mean, not from that standpoint. I get what you're saying. I'm saying for the stand, the standpoint of nobody even acknowledged that this was happening, right? Like it, nobody even like, if this was the right school, say what was a North Carolina, I agree or, with that, or a Duke, we'd have been like. This is one of the most dominant teams we've – you would have never stopped hearing about it. As far as the school powerhouse, I do feel like their dynasty or their history is a little slept on. Right. Um, that, I mean, see, and, you, that, right. And, you, and you see, like, you know, Karan Butler was at the game. You got Karan, you got Ray Allen, you got Rip. You know, I saw the, the montage of Shabazz Napier today. I was like, oh, yeah, the Shabazz Napier years. Right. But but it's like from from that standpoint that usually when we have a team, like for example, South Carolina on the women's side, that's all we talked about all year, right? No, I mean I, it's not all we talked about. We talked I mean, about but I'm Clark, saying Clark, when, Clark, when it came when it came from when it came to basketball, college basketball, the dominance of I would of say South Carolina, I would say that. I would say that they were probably third on storylines. Like Caitlin well, Clark was number one, LSU, LSU number two, and yeah, then but, South Carolina. But again, at no point in time, unless during the, the, the course of all these plots and all these, you know, headlines about Iowa and LSU and the possibility of them coming again and all the articles written of, about them, at no point in time did you dismiss South Carolina, because the whole time you were talking about LSU and you were talking about Iowa, they say, oh, cute story. Nobody's beating South Carolina. This has been going on all year. Yeah, but they're not right? doing but they're not doing the numbers they're doing without Caitlin Clark factor. Right. But but again. UConn going back to back. The numbers weren't even close. No, they're not going to be close. But you that's, see, that's kind of, but that's kind of like going to my point. Like part of the thing with Don Staley and and South Carolina's dominance, even with them being undefeated, they weren't necessarily the top story. They were the top team. Right. I mean, like there's no doubt about their credentials. I'm not dismissing how great they are, but they weren't necessarily the 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 top captivating story that drove all of this. They're part of it, right? 
But I just think with with UConn, it was just like, oh yeah, they're just they're killing everybody, <laughs> and that's it. And it's yeah. it's uh, it, but good for them, you know, good for them, man. The uh, Heat, they're back in action tonight against the Atlanta Hawks. Tip off is set for 7.30, first night of a back-to-back. Heat will be back at home tomorrow against the Mavericks. Duncan Robinson, he is going to miss tonight's game with a back. I don't know if that has to do with him just having the injury or this being part of a back-to-back, but he has not looked right since coming back from injury. That is for sure. He's got no lift. He can't really move. He can't move, run around like he, he has been able to. Right, which uh, is unfortunate because right. he was having a great season. He yep. was having a really, really great yep. season of a, a year, you could say, has been frustrating to to a degree for the Heat, for sure. I understand the Heat fan is frustrated. Man, Duncan Robinson playing the way that he has this year uh, has been really great, and it's unfortunate that right now he doesn't seem like he feels he's playing like himself because of whatever this is, this, this right. disc thing that's going on. So uh, 7.30 tip-off, 6.15 preheat with Solana. And Tommy Tig. Meanwhile, on our sister station, AM790, you can hear the Panthers. They are taking on the Ottawa Senators at 7 o'clock. And uh, the Cats obviously need to get right. But they kind of... Over under 7? Yeah, Ottawa stinks. So they've... Hopefully the Cats can uh, have a nice little slump buster tonight. They got some some slump busters here to end the season. You know, the last three up until they go to that last Toronto Maple Leafs game, Leroy. Right. to finish out the regular season. So maybe a little get right time for the cats and uh, get their play back in order. All of them home games too. Yep. All of them home. So if you have missed the Panthers so far, they're going to be in their barn. Check it on out. Uh, it a barn? Oh, it's a barn, dude. Hockey's a barn. Everybody knows that. Why? Uh, Cause like, Look at it. No, no, no. I don't want you to no. explain. It's a barn, dude. How everybody barn? calls it a barn. How, uh, no one calls it a barn. Everybody calls it a barn. Hockey, everybody knows it's a barn. You just know. It's just it's that hockey lingo. Well, we don't know. Well, you're not hockey heads. Oh, like I, yeah, okay. I don't care if you're wearing what a bomb got those shirts. It is on. a hockey building. I believe it was because back in the day in right. Minnesota on the Minnesota farms, they would have hockey rinks in there. It was so what is cold. a hockey arena called? No. No. R- Google it right. Not what is it called? An arena oh, called. Oh, wait, wait. Is a hockey arena called a barn? There That's it came up. A barn, a rink or arena. As mm. in, they have to come and play in our barn tonight. I'll take there my you point. go. I'll take my point. Woo! Apologize. When it comes from you, I feel like you're talking about barn. Point for Toby. Can I just say this? Mm-hmm. You did this to yourself. No, as to why wouldn't. nobody believes you, no, you because just, you fake Google. You're a couple of doubt you had comments. never fake Google two days in a row with me. You fake Google. I haven't fake Google. You you guys have done this two days in a row. You embarrassed yourself with the eclipse, and you've embarrassed yourself by not knowing that a hockey arena is called a barn. Right. Okay. You know, it's an up north Midwest thing, obviously, because yeah. it's hockey. Yeah, I'm nobody suggesting that in Davie there's a hockey rink in anybody's a barn. barn. I'm just oh, saying, yeah. you make it hard to believe you when you say stuff like that because you've been known to tell whoppers. It's not even something to believe in. T- typical puckheads know that that's oh, what you refer to. Oh, this is why. No, this is why. Like well, I would just, you know, I don't mean to call you a poser, but you're wearing a Vamos Gato shirt. I would assume you would why, know that. Why would you call me a poser? Because you should know that it's called a barn. Leroy didn't know it was called the barn. Yeah, that's just because he likes to argue with me. But I would assume you were in your mom's. Oh, yeah, that's it. Know. Dan Day, did you know? Whatever. Oh, he knew. Yeah, I knew. Yeah, I lived in knew. Wisconsin and stuff like that. So that's why I didn't. Oh, so did I. I right? You lived in Minnesota. You, you should have known that. That's why they call. That's why they call the Zamboni the ice tractor. Tractor. That's like it's in there. It's in their I, barn. That's more believable than barn. No, they don't it, call it ice tractor. They do. But he no see what I'm saying? Dude. See what I'm saying? You went too far. Wait, wait. you, you see what I'm saying? <laughs> you had to take it there. Mine is super fast. No, wait. Like you, you it's understand? Fast. Wait, I don't understand why you get mad that we don't believe you when you it's just threw ice. ice tractor at us. You would agree though, if you called it a barn, like it's it makes sense to call it the Zamboni an ice tractor. Next. I don't even want to. Next time we go to to next next time we go out to the Caseas, not the Caseas Center, but to Emirates 
Amber Bank Arena mm -hmm. and we're talking to hockey players, yeah. right? I want you to ask this question. Yeah. Have you ever ridden the ice tractor? <laughs> <laughs> no. No. Hey, no. Hey, Bob on tomorrow hey, will ask that. Hey. hey. That question better be asked with a straight face. I'm getting Bobrovsky on tomorrow. We're Let's asking this question. Who tries to get him on? We should get him on. I mean, they haven't been playing well. You can't call Mush on it now. Maybe it'll be a turnaround. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah, it could be a turnaround. So I yeah. think you should allow me to have so Bobrovsky. The on. next person you get, the next hockey player you interview, mm -hmm. and and no laughing, no smile. I want serious Tobin, a journalist. Okay. Hey, so you, have you ever and I determined the player though? Like, I feel like Kachuk would like it, but Barkov's not going to laugh. No, the next player. No, we don't know what that's going to be. Who that's going to be. You want me to look a fool. That's what yes. you want. No, you wait. It's I, okay for you to be jackass with us, but <laughs> people that take hockey serious, like, no, no. So you I've always wanted to ride the ice tractor. So, so hey, <laughs> have you ever ridden the ice tractor? No, I wish I have though. No. <laughs> Can we get you on one of them? I hope so. I really well. They, you know they no, do. A cool, no. They do. They do a cool thing at uh, at the Panthers game. They have a fan yeah. ice tractor, which is just full of seats. Like because it used to just be like one person can ride the the ice tractor, and now oh, like we're calling it that now. Yeah, you're trying to slip it I into the vernacular. It's like come yeah. on. <laughs> well, well, I mean, what, if you really think about it, that's what it is. So, and here's the problem. I get mad at you for saying crap like this, right? And and you fake Google and and you say stuff like this, but then when you get something right, and I question it, then people say I'm lashing out. But it's not lashing out if you always try to dupe us with this craziness. It's not that crazy. Track. They call it a barn. Ice now, like, tractor. If you're gonna have a barn. And why then you follow it up with ice tractor. So how can we believe it's a barn? We got some NFL uh, juicy, salacious news. What we got? Rumors. I'll tell you about it next.
560 WQAM. Take you up until 2. Got another pair of tickets to give away for Heat Raptors later on this hour. Uh, Leroy, I have a story here from uh, Jordan McPherson. Covers the Marlins for the Miami Herald. Um, and this is a report on the Skip Schumacher contract. Take for this, uh, take this uh, with what you will. But these are the deets they give, all right? Uh, they write, when the Miami Marlins quietly eliminated the 2025 team option on Skip Schumacher's contract this past winter, it wasn't the result of any dissatisfaction with the defending National League Manager of the Year. Instead, the move was made to appease Schumacher, multiple sources told the Miami Herald this week. The sources offered clarification in wake of the Sunday report by USA Today's Bob Nightingale that stated the Marlins agreed to void the 2025 team option on the manager's contract during contract talks this past winter. The sources said that Schumacher was upset about the departure of general manager Kim Ang who had left the team last October after owner Bruce Sherman informed her that she would report to a new president of basketball operations. Uh, Ang was unhappy about being stripped of power. Schumacher, who had a good relationship with Ang, expressed concerns in a conversation with Sherman before Sherman hired Peter Bendix as the team's new top basket, uh, baseball exec. As a show of good faith, Sherman agreed to void the 2025 team option on the manager's contract. This allows Schumacher to seek another job if he wishes next winter. Schumacher is expected to explore other options after the season. Uh, to be clear, Schumacher has no interest with uh, issues with Bendix. He is simply displeased with Ang's departure and the change in the organizational hierarchy. So I don't know how much better that makes you feel that it was Skip Schumacher's choice, not um, their choice. But I think um, my thought of it is, while it may paint like they're not doing Skip Schumacher dirty, it still kind of speaks to the idea of he had something that kind of seemed like it worked, and all of a sudden you were like, "Right," and I, I think this. that that's maybe what Skip was saying. Like, wait a minute, we're on a roll here. Why are we changing things? You only change things when things aren't going well. Right, right. So, so, so from that standpoint, I could see why um, maybe he would want that. They go, look, 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 or maybe they said something like this. Look, we're still going to be okay. And to show you that we're not, you know, going to do you dirty, we're going to void the last year. And if you don't like what's going on here, you have the ability to go somewhere else. Maybe it was presented like that, right? So I get it. It's still like, here's my thing. I have never known an organization to ever put information out there without clarification that makes them look bad. Right? 100%. And so the fact that it got out the way it did, most organizations would have put this portion of the story out first so they would make it sound like they were doing Skip Schumacher a solid and not that they were screwing over him. Because when it first got reported, it looked as if, though, they were doing him dirty. The, uh, yeah, Schumacher apparently was asked about it, but said, uh, but didn't want to address it. He said, quote, Bruce has always treated me and my family great. Right. And uh, Peter Bendix also declined to explain the reasons for the change. But also... Nobody wanted to do it on the record. Also, never want to get into a situation where you badmouth an owner because there's only 30 of them. They yeah. talk. For sure. And so oh, I, I feel like the rest know, of the, I feel like huh? the rest of the owners are probably looking at Sherman and being like, Sherman. Probably the same way they did Loria. I mean, they had more. I mean, Loria owned three teams basically. Oh, yeah. He did the old shuffle. We did. He owned um, the the um, Canadian team. The Expos, yeah. The es Expos. Then they moved to. Um, then he swapped well, them for. No, uh, he came. He got. He he owned a piece of the Yankees. I believe he was a minority Yankees owner. Then he got in on the Expos, and then when the Expos were going to move to Washington, he got the Marlins. Right there, you go. 
and then somehow ended up with a billion dollars. You think anybody read that book that he wrote? How no. many copies do you think that thing sold? Oh. Twelve. I mean, yeah. Is there any way I could find that out? Could I do reporting on how many copies? What's the name of the book? Of book. Hold on. Uh, how to how to screw a city? I think is a yeah. That was that was I think that, that was the I'm working subtopic, title. Yeah. Hey. Uh, how to how to fire how to change managers like I change underpants. I think that's Jeff. It's just like when you release a book like that, you have to have some type of knowledge of no one's gonna read it, yeah, right? No one's gonna read that book. Who's right? Who 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 read the Jeffrey Laurie book? Did who's like book? who's like, mm, oh, that looks like a good read. Do you think like he was a do you think like he apologized about anything in that or it was all because at one time the last thing that Jeffrey Laurie wrote, it was a letter on how I was supposed to be a fan. Which I responded by canceling my season tickets. How do you spell Jeff Loria? Uh, I believe you call you spell it B A S T A R D. Come on, I'm trying to find a book. Comma R A T L O R I A. Okay, there we go. I figured you know how to spell Jeff, so I didn't. L O R I A. It says entrepreneur, American entrepreneur and author. <laughs> uh no. No. Yeah, you nope. can't find it anywhere? No. I'm on I'm on um Amazon. What's it called, uh Dan Day? Give me a second. <laughs> uh let's see what the book is called. Is oh, it, I got it. From the front row. From the front row. What's From the front row. Art? Reflections of a major league baseball owner and modern art dealer. How much can I get this book for? He's an art dealer. Twenty audio CD. So wait, twenty three ninety nine. Let me get this straight. For thirty, is there a, it used? Is there an audio version of this book where he's yes. reading it, or do you think he has a narrator? It says audible audio book and audio CD. Do you think he read it, or do you think he hired somebody to read it? No. Well, some people do. No, listen, it depends on your book deal. Some some people are going to make you it's read got, it. It's got four point six. Yeah, because he voted Leroy, for it. It has six ratings. Six. Let me see. Oh, you're on Amazon too? I could write a book and get six ratings on people from people. I'd ask hold JJ, on, you, Dan Day. Hold on, hold on, hold on. Hold on, hold on, hold on. Let me see the ratings. Six ratings is not enough. That's six too ratings. small of a sample size. You've seen money, bro. First of all, too small of a sample size. First of all, he has oh, six, yeah. six global ratings. Once again, too small of a sample size. Patricia on Amazon says this book gives a front row seat to wheeling and dealing in art and baseball. A good read. That's a fake reading. Lean, Patricia, lean on the art. <laughs> Patricia's Patricia's got to be like Loria's wife. She's a cousin or something. Yeah, there's no way. There's no way. Yeah, like you put my mom and my brother and like two or three other family members. My rating's perfect. Like, Jeffrey, okay, so Jeffrey Loria only has six ratings, which means he only has he only has six people who had the time. Oh, wait. I put Here. a star on it, but he only had two people write reviews. Wait, wait, you ready? Yeah. There's there's rankings. Uh, uh I just wanted to best you sellers. Wait, wait, best best sellers rank. Yeah. First of all, it's 448 pages. I'm That's out. A, I'm out. I mean, for art in his crappy baseball. Are you ready? <laughs> yeah. His ranking. Guess what his ranking is. Go ahead. How do you like out of what? Just books. Of all time? Yeah, my, I got different breakdowns. In the history of books? 1984, Tale of Two no. Cities. <laughs> Two one million. Mil, one million sixty one thousand nine hundred ninety four in books. 550 in Jewish biographies. Hmm. 940 in baseball biographies. How many baseball biographies and are there? 31,221 in memoirs. We'll talk to Peter Pratt, Locked On Marlins, and see if he's ever read the Jeffrey Loria book next. <laughs>
Ah, welcome back, everybody. Tobin and Leroy here with you. 560 WQAM. Let's go out to the Toyota of Hollywood guest line. Shop hundreds of Toyotas indoors in one of America's largest showrooms at Toyota of Hollywood on 441 between Hollywood and Sheridan. One of our favorites, our guy across the pond, Peter Pratt, the host of the Lockdown Marlins podcast, which you guys get on all your podcast platforms. Watch it on YouTube. Oh, he Peter. upgraded. Oh, he did an upgrade. Nice Look video, at the boy. Let's go. Up? That's looking good, dude. How uh, how are you, buddy? How is how are things? This has been a rough start to the year. Uh, personally, I'm doing well. I've got the upgrade here. Look, look yes, at this. I the blue that. vibes. You know, I'm just sitting here sipping champagne. What else is there to do? But um, yeah, boy. Oh boy, it has been a rough start for the Marlins. Is anyone still watching? <laughs> it's only the 9th of April, and is everyone tuned out? I don't know. Well, That's they crazy. play games in two hours, so you, you don't have to watch along. <laughs> You're not invested oh, much. That was crazy yesterday. Fast one last night. Yeah, yeah. it was. <laughs> um, what is, uh, I guess, been the thing that's disappointed you the most so far this season? I felt like this was a year that, you know, kind of had a little sneaky optimism. You know, we were talking about having a lineup that was deeper, was uh, was going to be a little, uh, uh, you know, be able to frustrate pitchers. And, you know, this rotation, this pitching situation has just kind of felt like it's unraveled everything. What, what have you made of it so far, Peter? I think that's it, isn't it? Just like literally before the season started, you know, all of a sudden pitching injuries galore. And it was just like, it's just set everything back. Like the rotation's gone. Next thing is the bullpen's gone. It's just so tough. Like four fifths of the rotation out, it's tough. But the offense wasn't upgraded enough. Like you have to look back at the off season and they didn't do enough. They didn't do enough with this roster. It's, that's the disappointment. That's been my disappointment. I've been covering this team every day through the off season. I mean, I had nothing to talk about. I, I should have just started up again in, you know, last week in March, and that would have been it. I would have covered you it. You yeah, should have done that. Peter, what did you expect when they brought the guy from Tampa oh, no. to run the team, right? Like, you oh, no. knew it was going to be a situation where, okay, they're not – they're trying not to spend money. They're bringing in guys who can kind of get away with not spending money. So some of the guys you're going to bring in are be guys that were good two years ago that they hope hit lightning in a bottle again. My question is, with all the things that have gone on year after year after year, every time they bring in a new regime or a new head guy or a new coach, they say these words. We got to rebuild our farm system. We've been hearing that for 15 years. When is it going to be built? There's, there's the question. I mean, as soon as you got a raise guy in, Leroy, you know, you knew the drill, right? Like right. it was, there's going to be another rebuild as soon as, and I get it. And it's easy to look a bit north and go, that does feel sustainable, but it's going to take time to get there. Like we're talking five years away. Right. And this club has just been in the postseason right. as the five seed. Like maybe now is time. I know Sandy's missing, but maybe now is time to invest, but no. It's that's going to rebuild, and Skip Schumacher is going to be that's the big news, obviously, recently as well. And things seem to be unraveling super rapid. We're 11 games in, and it feels like a complete disaster here for the Marlins. And this is going to be a tough year, you, yeah. I think it would be even more scarier if Sandy gets healthy and then they use Sandy to rebuild the farm system. I mean, how much yeah. you got to look around the roster and think. How many of the guys on the roster actually can you get significant pieces back? I know Sandy's definitely one, Lozado, Arias, and Jazz. But beyond that, honestly, you look around and you think, is anyone giving up anything of note for Brian De La Cruz and Jesus Sanchez? Well, we just look at this over people. We're like, man, they had their chance mm -hmm. to do that with trading Yelich. And I know it's different regimes or whatever, but they blew it so hard with the Jeter era because you basically oh, traded – four studs and all you really got out of it was sandy like that's crazy that's like i feel like by accident i could look at the rankings and do a better job than that like to to, to go and trade real muto yelich stanton and ozuna and all i got for it is is one ace is cra is crazy and even you know getting in jazz like you had to give up maybe uh the best arm of, a, of them all so it, it's it is a little depressing to look down the barrel of that and say, "Wow, they're going to have to really revamp this again," which I guess um, goes to the Skip Schumacher thing. So you get this news over the weekend that they voided his deal. The news comes out today, I guess, that 
that was to do skip a solid. But none of it really makes me feel better because they're right. reporting that like, well, he was pissed that they got rid of Kim Ang. I said that on my show. I mean, you could see it coming, right? Kim Ang gave Skip exactly the tools that was needed. And Skip managed a blinder. I mean, boy, oh boy, Skip, manager of the year. Stunning performance for the Marlins to be. There was a bit of luck. I get it. But Skip did everything. To, you know, sorry, Kim gave everything to Skip that he needed. Soon as Kim was gone, you know, Skip knew, like Leroy's calling out, like <laughs> the raise models coming in, and Skip obviously, you know, blew his blew his gasket at that one. And you know, however they want to dress this up, like they've had a disagreement in this space, and Skip's going to be gone. Which again, more talent, I guess it's off the field talent at this point, but more talent going to be leaving the organization. So, I mean, could they even trade Skip Schumacher at this point? I mean, anyone could be sold. Right. Who knows? They, listen, if they could, they'd try. If they they it would. Like, it feels <laughs> like the way it would. But, like, I don't even – this is the thing, man, that's that's kind of frustrated. We were talking about, like, Loria back last segment. And it's like, you mm. know, I feel like back in that era, like, yeah, they were bums running the organization. But at least they were my bums, and I knew who to be mad at for years after years. And I'm just frustrated at this point because I just feel rudderless because it's like, who do I get mad at? Do I get mad at Bruce Sherman? Am I mad at – Je Jeter's gone. I can't be pissed at him mm. anymore. Kim Ang, they 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 kicked out the door. Peter Bendix has been here for three seconds. People want to get mad at Skip Schumacher. It's like, what did you expect? You know, this is of course. So, I just feel like it's one of these things where, like, you feel like you're yelling into at, at clouds. Like, who who are you pissed at of over all this? This is it. Who do you, who do you complain to? Who do you moan to? I, I don't even know. I blame Sixto Sanchez to be honest with you. That's that's the only. <laughs> only it's the only one I could think of. But I mean, Bruce. I, to, to be fair, like. For me, Bruce Sherman, this was a perfect, I mean, this was the perfect off-season for the Marlins. Everyone was available, all this talent, super cheap. Right. I mean, how much money did you ha actually have to invest to improve this roster? Probably less than 5 million. A couple of guys on 1.5 million deals. The offense looks miles better. Bruce Sherman wouldn't even do that. He spent 5 million on, on Tim Anderson and then wanted to get the money back by trading Birdie. So, yeah. <laughs> you know, this... Bruce Sherman, for me, I need to see more investment. And he did say last year, we will spend, we will spend. But I, I needed to see investment now. And listen, I'm a fan of this team now. I, I, I don't want to be committing to a five-year rebuild again. The cycle just continues. Like, let's let's enjoy this window and, and add to it. What's going on? You, you know, know what I hate, Peter? I hate when they use the examples of teams that have done it. Mm. So they use... We want to be what the Astros were. We want to be what the Orioles were. And we want to rebuild through our farm system and get it, get some young players or whatever. But what has happened here hmm. is every time those young players get to where it's time to perform and you're going to get to that, they don't pay them and they get rid of them. So I like it. Continues. Right. It, exactly. This is it. Yeah, I'm also confused because, like, I, I remember, the, like, look, we've been through rebuilds with the Marlins. Like, but, man, at least they had, like, they'd find young guys who could hit. You'd yeah. find guys you could watch every day. Great. They found some overwhelming young pitching that seems like that's been pretty decent. You know, Sandy, Yuri, and great that Max Myers back. I don't know what's going to happen with Sixto, but, man, I can't remember the last young bat that came up. And I'm like, man, this guy is going to be our star at least up until he's through arbitration. They haven't had that since the Yelich, since the Yelich Rio Muto was done, man. Mate, this, this, I mean, what you're talking about here just signals to me what we're seeing right now. During this offseason, all I've heard is Marlins fans talking about this dude called Troy Johnston. Like, that. that's the next big hope. He's a 27-year-old dude who's in AAA. I mean, <laughs> oh, come on. I mean, that is... <laughs> That's wow. just, a, a, yeah. you know, just shows just how, uh, to your point, like just how barren it's been. Like, where's these young, sexy sticks that you can just add in and just feel good about? Right. They just haven't got that. I know they've every you know, team. They've every team has those one or two studs that yeah. they're almost holding back so they could keep that extra year, right? Yeah. The Marlins looking at their farm system and, like you said, a 27-year-old. <laughs> Mate, they're looking at the farm system hoping they've only got three years of control in them. Like, that's how bad their farm system yeah. is. <laughs> They don't want six years of control with these dudes. So uh, it's it's really barren. We acknowledge that. I think that's the point. It's like it's clear that the farm system has problems. And it, it dates back to that rebuild that is probably the worst rebuild that's ever, that's ever been attempted in history. But 
I mean, you know, it, it's just it's the frustration of the postseason into this. You know, one little spike of excitement, one little spike of entertainment and success, it just brings Marlins doom. That's just what happens. That's the cycle. A spike, rebuild, doom. Um, and so, yeah, it's going to be a tough one. Yeah, it's a frustrating thing, too, because you never have gotten to see with this organization keeping that going. You know, like I look at people always wondered, is baseball going to work down here? Is it going to be successful down here? Could you keep it going? And I do know a lot of people who grew up idolizing the 03 teams and all those teams, but they have never done, like, for example, just here in this market, Peter, is the Panthers. Like, the mm. Panthers have now put five straight years together of, we made the playoffs, we're just going to keep building off of it. And you can just say that now they have a, a thriving, you know, type of fan base that, that people care night in and night out. I really do think that they could make that happen. If they go down this route again, I don't know if they, I don't know if it could take another three, four years of this. It feels like it's on the edge, doesn't it? And uh, to be honest with you, the Marlins, they feel like they're prioritizing like out of market and international baseball at this point. Yeah. All you get is the hype about the Caribbean series and the WBC. You know, you know what I mean? Like that's that's what they're hyping it for. Is that's you know, they're filling the stands with that. And really, the on the on-field product, I mean, it no one's committed to that at this point. And the Panthers are the perfect example. Like, how the hell is has this market become a hockey town, you know, it's crazy, right? And the reason it is, is because they commit, sustain success, and people buy into that. You can't just have one flash in the pan and then rebuild and expect the fans to come. I mean, come on. You, that is, and Bruce I, Sherman kind of alluded to that during the offseason. Like, I think the fans could do more. I'm like, Bruce, you can do more. Bruce Sherman, you can do I more. Do more. Like, I don't I know. Can, as long as, like, I think I came, I moved down here the first year in the Marlins. No, it was 93, right? Was it 93? Yep. yep. Right. Yep. And I can't think of a stretch of, say, three years where this organization has stayed committed to putting a product on the team. That's even after winning World Series, right? It wasn't a three-year, you know, plan. It was let's dump a bunch of money in it, see if it works out, and then get rid of it. They've yeah. never, like, they want to do what all these organizations, these other organizations are doing and rebuild, but they never, ever make the commitment to the young talent because as soon as it's time to get paid, they trade them. This is it. That's the problem, right? That You know, right. rebuild all you want, but when you hit on these young, sexy studs, pay them. You've done the hard work. You right. have done the hard work. You have found the difference makers. Pay them to keep them. If you just keep cycling it around, at some point, you're going to run out of luck. Prospects are going to flame out, and you're going to be back in the same situation. Not enough talent. That's the problem. All right, we've been beating them up enough. Has there been, in a 1-10 in ten start, has there been a couple of bright spots that you've enjoyed? Has there been anything that you have looked at and been like, all right, I'll still enjoy this so far? What what has been the, the thing that you're a little excited about in the start of the season so far? <laughs> it's tough in 1-10, in ten, isn't it? But... <laughs> You know, for me, I'm a big jazz fan. Uh, and I mean, jazz, Chisholm and Junior, not, not the, the music genre. But, you know, for me with jazz, a grand slam already on the board, a three-run yeah. shot, a couple of stolen bags. Like, it's like, for me, jazz is the one that excites me. He's, he is a difference maker. We saw it in like the first game or two. He is the difference maker. And unfortunately, that what that means in this current cycle means that jazz is going to be one of the guys that's moved real soon. And he's going to be the, the the true building block piece. I know Arias is fun, but he's very unique and very specific and has less control. But Jazz is is the one that excites me. For me, he has elite upside. And, you know, that has been the moments. Like, Jazz's flashes have been good. Jake Berger's been fine. But man, oh, man, like in a 1-10 start, it's hard. I don't but blame you. I must say, Max Meyer, from a pitching perspective, and let's not forget, Max Meyer wasn't even supposed to be in the rotation. He's ended up in this rotation by accident. And he's the one that's performing. I don't I don't think anyone expected that. Max Meyer looks looks nice. He looks, you know, a young stud, another arm that they can work with. But yeah, overall it's, you know, some of the highlights have been they've got a new jersey color. There's been a solar eclipse in New York. And I mean, apart from that, it's been pretty rough. Uh, before we get you out of here, Peter, uh, what is your interest level in reading the Jeffrey Loria biography? 
<laughs> Listen, guys, I haven't been a Marlins fan for long enough to have like the serious amount of distaste associated, oh, you know, towards. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Do you know what I mean? Like, if you've been through it for longer, then I, I completely get it. So, I think I could pick that book up. I'm not really a reader, though. Like, the last book I read, I, actually, the last book I read was a Marlins book, but it was two years ago. It was around the 97 season, um, which was fun. So, I mean, maybe I'll give it a go, but I didn't hear the segment. Was everyone bashing it saying never read it? Or what Nobody's was... read it. I, like, I, Nobody's we, read it, yeah. I mean, I haven't either. We saw, we saw it has two reviews on Amazon. It has six ratings total, which means, you know, just have to hit the star. I don't think anybody's read this book that's not his family. I don't think anybody's read it. Oh, but he, it, it came out last year. I remember him doing – I saw a couple of articles doing a little press for it, but I'm like, w like, w what compelled this man to write a book? Like, who who wants to read the yeah. Jeffrey Loria story? Was it The Secrets of Being an Owner? Was that the book from memory or something along those lines? I can't actually recall the, the, the main topic. I don't area. know. Dude, I remember one year. It was the year when they made the big Blue Jays trade. It was the year after – uh, so it was 2013 and he had come out with his whole list of like why you you know how to be a Marlins fan similar to like Sherman infringing on that territory yeah. and I was like you know how I'm a fan I'm gonna cancel my season tickets that's the how I'm a fan Jeffrey Laurie Kiss here's the ass. name of the book from the front row reflections of a major league baseball owner and modern art dealer oh yeah <laughs> <laughs> oh my thanks yeah, the sculpture's still there is it a time rolls off the tongue? Home run sculpture. Yeah, I hope he was a better art dealer than he was a, an owner. That's that's all I can say about that. But boy, oh boy, Peter, <laughs> you do a fantastic job, man. Uh, if you guys want to uh, get your Marlins coverage, even if it's a rough start this season, this man he can put a great uh, a great reaction to all of it. Peter Pratt at Miami Marlins underscore UK locked on Marlins host. Go check him on out, Peter. Appreciate the time, man. Thank you so much. Thanks, Peter. You, guys, please see you guys. All right, before we get out of here uh, for this hour and get into our cat talk, let's give away another pair of tickets right now to Heat Raptors. If you guys want to go to the final regular season game of this regular season coming up Sunday afternoon, 1 p.m. tip-off, caller number caller six, caller six to 305-567-0560, 0560 caller six will get a pair of tickets to Heat Raptors Sunday afternoon, 1 p.m. Caller six. We'll get a pair of tickets to Heat Raptors. Back after this.
All right, welcome back. Toma to Leroy here with you. Let's get to some cat talk here. Brought to us by our friends over at Celsius. Hockey fans, don't sit this one out. When it's game time, make Celsius a part of your play and get that energy up. Game day is fueled by Celsius Essential Energy Drinks, the official energy drink of your Florida Panthers. I'm not going to drink this, Leroy, just because I've already had two Cafe Bustellos today. So, But I don't love you. I had one this morning. I don't love you any less, Celsius. I just don't want Leroy to fight me by the end of the show. So I, had, gonna... I, had, I had one this morning before I went to the gym. Oh, man. Uh, all right. A couple things of the cats. They're uh, in action tonight. 7 o'clock is your puck drop. You can hear that on AM 790. That's over there, Jay Fig. That studio. Um, if you guys want to listen to that, Sergey Bobrovsky in net today, according to Paul Maurice, that's from uh, Jameson Olive's uh, Twitter account. So uh, we got that, but this is interesting, Leroy. How about this? Uh, from Andy Slater, Slater Scoops on Twitter, he uh, writes Hard Rock Bet and the Florida Panthers have signed a multi year partnership, Amaranth Bank. Arena will now have betting walls starting tonight. I'm told the walls will feature game odds and more, but wagers cannot be made in person. They're still only through the Hard Rock app, but I believe internet works in the arena, so you guys should be good. But how about that? The uh, the first local team to have odds walls in their arena, Leroy. For all sports or just hockey? I don't know. It, it says game odds. I'm assuming everything. But I, I would imagine there's going to be a big Panthers feature. <laughs> yeah. Oof. Yes. All right. I like that. Funsky. Uh, fun, Funsky's right there. So there you go. If you guys are in the uh, in the building tonight, you could check out the Hard Rock Bet app. Get those chili peppers going. I mean, since we're talking about it, I might as well take a little uh, peruse around the app, see what they got going. It's got to be tough this time of year because you don't know who's playing. Let's see. We'll see who they got listed for tonight. Panthers. Bobrovsky is going to be in goal tonight as well. Yeah, Bobrovsky is in goal tonight. We can go Bobrovsky over saves, Leroy. Player props. But it's Ottawa. It is Ottawa. They shut him out last time, though. Yeah, but <clears throat> it, but it doesn't matter. It goes how many saves. So you could shut somebody out and, and saves be 25 and you only get 20 shots. His over under on saves is so bad. His over under. You see what I'm saying? If Ottawa is so up. bad, they might not get 25 shots off. So how is he going to get 25 saves? Shout out for Bob plus 700. Hmm. Shut up. Mm, I don't know though. Ottawa, Ottawa's got pride. They're not going to just get shut out two times in a row. That would be bad. That would be bad. But they're bad. They're not that bad. Yeah, we got the Kachuk showdown tonight. We could do a Kachuk parlay. What's that? Uh, let's see. Same game parlay. Let's go Brady Kachuk and Matthew Kachuk. Oh, hold on. Let's go goal score. This is first goal score. Why would they have that as the first option? That's stupid. I was wondering why those odds were so fat. Uh, let's see. If we have both Kachuk scoring tonight, plus 525. That's it? Yep. That seems like it should be way higher than that. No, because they're, I mean, they're both, you know, Brady is the favorite goal scorer on Ottawa, and Matthew is right under Reinhardt. Oh, okay. So we'd have to go with somebody else a little bit juicier, unless you want to go Brady Kachuk parlay, uh, Brady Kachuk, Matthew Kachuk parlay with a Bob shutout. Oh, I guess we couldn't do a shutout. We could go over <laughs> on stage. Oh. Wait a minute. You, you. This is what happens I'll when I get greedy. Bet. I'll take that bet. How much you want to bet? Don't do it. I'll so take that bet. Pretty. I'll mm -hmm. take that bet. Well, yeah, listen, Jfig, you missed it, right? Let's see. Brady Kachuk oh, and Matthew. Ka wait, Brady, Brady. You know how he gets. Brady Kachuk and Matthew Kachuk mm -hmm. can't score, and Bob get a shutout. Right. What and happens if Bob gets pulled? What if uh, What if Bob gets injured and he? Uh, if Bob, if Bob would be like, oh, hamstring, and Stoli the goalie gives up a one. Stoli comes in. Does that still count? Uh, Never wow. happens. They're too tough in hockey. Yeah, you don't get pulled out when you're pitching mm -hmm. a no-hitter. What about Tarasenko? Who's that? He's the new guy we got from Buffalo, remember? Yeah. Oh, oh, the Russian guy. Mm. Hmm. Tarasenko. And What's over under goals for the Marlins? Four? Uh, over under on runs? Scores on goals? Yeah. Well, the Marlins. Wait, what? No, I mean on the um, Panthers. Sorry. 
Oh, one and a one and a half. No, no, no way. Against Ottawa, it ain't okay. one and a half. Total. What is the total goals? Four. Do, 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 do. There we go. Panthers. Three and a half. Three and a half. I'll take that. Okay. Not that much, though. It's minus three, minus 135. So let's do a parlay. Kachuk right. goal. Not both Kachuks. Just Matthew. Just Matthew. A shutout. And uh, over four, over three and a half goals. All right, so you want to it'll pay like it'll pay like two fifty, and then he wants the Bob shutout, greedy. It'll pay like two fifty, plus two thousand. Ooh, oh, I'm in. There you go. Hmm. Uh, well, all right. Anyway, let's get to the rest of our headlines. Brought to you by the new Palmetto Ford Truck Super Center. Why buy a truck at a car store? Palmetto Ford. We know trucks we got some uh heat injury news that we'll get to uh, coming up in 15 minutes of heat uh, but this is a this was spicy leroy did you see this going around uh this was a radio host for our sister station 1053 the fan in dallas our odyssey oh boy. Uh, sister station and he's been hearing rumblings about micah parsons in dallas and do with this what you will but See if uh, this tickles anybody's fancy down here when it comes to from uh, way too markers. many. I've heard from way too many people this off season. Way too many. I'm talking about at least at least four different people that Micah has worn thin there. Ooh. Hmm. Now I don't know how much is 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 true and how much it actually hurts. I don't know whether this is the behavior of a typical superstar i don't know how damaging it is but all i do know is this i've heard from way 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 too from way too many people if micah parsons was out of there there'd be a decent amount of people inside the ford center at the star in frisco smiling or breathing a sigh of relief hmm. wow um, 105 three the fan in dallas i could see it and here's why hmm um, one, if you've been paying attention to Dallas and their struggles on defense, every team that plays them runs the ball at Micah Parsons because he's terrible at stopping the run. Mm. He only wants to rush the passer. Mm. Now, when you think of all of the guys that are supposedly elite at his position, they don't have that issue, right? And so from a football perspective, that separates him from the elite. If you well, can't – if if the game plan is to run – Well, he is an elite pass rusher. I mean, there's – He's an elite pass rusher, okay? But he's going to want to get paid to be a complete player, not just to be a situational player. Yeah, but we've seen with uh, we we've seen with this because this took with Christian Wilkins like sacks get you paid. Oh, okay. He's got forty, I, I, he's got 40 and a half sacks this, in three years. Let, let me explain. The Christian Wilkins deal didn't happen. They said that, but if you look at their finances, they were never going to be able to afford Christian Wilkins. Never. Whoa. So you can put whatever twist you want on it. Right? Mm -hmm. they, if once they didn't sign him early, they were never going to be able to afford him. What if Chris Greer were to call up Jerry Jones, you know, and we could go, we, we, we what, what do you, what are you getting mad at? Just say it. Just, you know, if, if he's wearing thin, I didn't, I didn't make this, he's wearing, I, didn't, I didn't bring this up and try to explain this. You didn't bring it up. I brought so it up. No, I didn't thin. try to explain why it could be happening. For you to just come over the top and say, I want him. What? Well, nah, I want him. But if he's wearing thin, I want him, dude. You want him wearing thin here? Hell yes, dude. We Oh, listen. Wearing thin in Dallas is not like wearing thin there. First of all, that, that, that fan base, they're a bunch of psychotics over there. They wear thin. They don't like anything. They're a bunch of ingrates. 
We bring him over here, baby. You know, you want to throw him the, the, instead of all this guessing about the twenty first pick. What is he? Twenty four years old. Going to be twenty five in May. Yeah, that, that's like the side. That's like the age of uh, Michael Penix Jr. You gonna Why don't we? You going to be able to pay him? We pay him. I mean, we pay him whatever, whatever he wants. And by the way, healthy. You know, even if we have to, you know, part ways with one of our pass rushers and say, hey, you go you to only Dallas. Got one you can get rid of, and you can't get rid of him because him the he minute. just redid his deal. Mm. What about JP? Hmm. he doesn't make enough money he's young so yeah they get a young prospect right but then they get to be in the same spot wait wait wait. you you do realize okay (sighs) unlike other sports yeah you have to pass a physical you can't you can't you can't just trade somebody that you know no no Great, even better. So we'll find somebody else to trade, and then we have three pass rushers. We got three elite pass rushers alongside hey, Micah Parsons. You really? You, really, it, hmm? you what about? Okay, okay, hear me out. Hear me out. Hear me out. What about this? What about this? What about this? What about this? Dan, he won't listen no, to me on this. Dan, don't play. His hear game. me out on this. All right, let's go. What about Javon Holland? You put Javon Holland on the table for Micah Parsons, right? And the twenty-first pick. Who says no? Huh? Dallas says no. Really? But if, if he's, he's wearing, wearing thin, thin, if he's wearing thin, it's the thinness. Yeah, that you have to he's wearing about. thin. Jerry Jones, he doesn't have time for hey. thin patience. He's old. The old don't have Here. time for thin patience. Can I just say this? There's a couple of headaches that you don't want, right? The most important headache, the most painful headache. Is signing or trading for a guy mm-hmm. whose contract is up. You don't want that. Why not? You don't want that. Why not? You couldn't afford to pay your own guy. This guy's going to make more Mike than that. Better play than Christian Wilkins, though. I'm. Did you hear what I said? He's going to make more than that. Yeah. If you couldn't afford the last guy you got rid of, then but what? You couldn't afford it for a position that's a little bit squirrely. People don't know how, how do we, what do we pay a guy like that? You know, it, but, but pass rush, everybody agrees getting pressure on the quarterback is a very important thing, Leroy. Everybody and and can I ask you a question? Yeah. What if the same issues that he had there follow him here? I'm not talking about the uh, the the other stuff. We have. I'm talking, hold on, hold on. I'm talking about the game plan. Where everybody runs directly to Michael Parsons, then what? Well, here's the thing: we have a more fortified base here. Plus, we got the bob and weave defense. You know, he's going to know what to do. As aside from these Dallas jackals who don't know what they're doing, and the other thing is, we embrace personality down here in Miami. You know, Mike McDaniel. You didn't answer my question. I, you I, I, asked my question. You're talking about personality. I'm just saying, like. I like personality this is all about his ability on the field let's just talk this out if he is wearing thin and he needs a place where he could allow him to you him gonna to answer, just tell me wait if you're not gonna anymore. answer my question just tell me no now and i'll listen i'm just saying like you gotta you gotta figure these things out on who you're gonna pay who you're not gonna pay if you're not gonna pay, you're not gonna pay everybody right but if you're not sure about paying a safety right maybe you know and, and by the way who can even hit anymore right you can't even hit anymore in the in the backfield. Like these these guys don't even know. He doesn't even. He, he's thinking that tackling's outlawed the snowman. So I'm just saying that maybe we 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 throw a little sweetener in the in the deal, and we could we could see what Dallas said. What's the harm in calling? Right? What's the harm in calling? If he's wearing thin, maybe this is all ball bleep. I don't know. Right. The only thing is that's not a fair trade for Dallas. Michael Parsons for Javon Holland in a 21st pick. What, what the do you fan base would go crazy? Fan, well, here's the thing, Dan. And we know their fan base first, is crazy. First round picks are like gold now. They're not no. giving them up for anybody these days. No. They're not giving them up for anybody these days. If anything, da- we're doing Dallas a favor. Okay. One of the elite pass rushers. Yeah, but he's. I mean, like Dan. You know, seems Dan, like Dan, Dan. Head, you know what I'm saying? But I trust Dan, you Dan for no Welcome reason. to my world. <laughs> you will, <laughs> Leroy. This is your thing. Now you're saying that. Michael Parsons really bad against the rush. What do they keep running at him? Now that's where you have to trust your new defensive coordinator, Anthony Weaver, to scheme up to protect him from guys running at him. Um, here's the deal. 
There's what? certain there's certain issues you have as a football player that don't necessarily ever leave you right. until you show there ain't a scheme that that can get you into the put your helmet and head in there and stop the run, right? That's a finesse versus physicality thing. Mm. You see what I'm saying? Mm. Now he plays a style of defense where he wants to rush the passer, but is not committal on stopping the run. And that's why when you go and look and watch what teams did to game plan against Michael Parsons, they just start running at him. Yeah, you are truly Roy. There's parts in the games where Michael Parsons is loud and proud, and there's other parts he's quiet as a church now, member. Yeah, now let me ask you, on, Dan. He's can, loud can at. He's him? better than hey, everybody else at being loud you, at. But can you pay him? Right. Elite money. Paid Chubb. For half elite. He's a better player. Like Chubb, Chubb, he's not. He, Bradley Chubb is not the player Michael Parsons is. They paid him no. sight unseen. Right, and they've already reduced it. Yeah, well, well, listen, we, we'll, we'll, we'll fit how it's got to fit. Do you, do you, but there's a will, there's a way when it comes to Steven Ross. Baby. Do you understand Michael Parsons' contract mm -hmm. is going to look like 20 plus million a year? Oh, and listen. you got questions on whether he's committed to stopping the run. No, no, you can't have, do it for that you, amount of money. You, yes, you, you have, do. You have questions. There's you don't have questions based on the football you've seen. I think what I, what I, all see, I have is the wait. I'm not, this is not conjecture, this is not imagining. All I have is what I have seen mm -hmm. him do on a football field. Yeah, but like, look at the support. No, 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 no. no We're I'm not imagining. You. We're I not making stuff up. I'm taking the facts of his abilities on a football field and determining this. You don't That's think he's it. an elite player? What? You don't think he's an elite player? He's an elite pass rusher. Oh, you get after that quarterback, right? You can, But you can't, you can't pay for an elite position for a guy that only pays plays half the time. You're doing yourself a disservice. Well, they had, listen, maybe it's the system over there. Do you understand? Mm -hmm. He's going to make 20 plus million a year. Deserved. And you would give him, wait, you would give him 20 plus million a year and just deal with him not stopping the run. Dude, if he's going to kill Do you the understand what's going to happen to you? Anybody have more sacks than him since he's been in the league? Do you understand what? So mm. they'll just run it at him. Dude. Listen, it, let me explain something to you. One pass rusher, I can eliminate with an offensive scheme. Yeah, but you're not going to have one pass rusher. You're going to have three. And who's going to stop the run? We got what? Do, do you understand? It on up. They, no, they they just we still got Zach Sealer. They they just uh, oh dude, you you do I you I can't I, run, outrun Zach Sealer. And who's that guy we just got? Tart. Oh, we got Tart, dude. Tier Tart. Tier Tart. Tier Tartar. It's all happening for us, baby. You can't outrun the bob and weave. Sometimes I wonder if you know anything about football. And then you open your mouth and confirm it. Yeah. We well, actually got Shaquille Barrett, who has more sacks over the past four years than uh, Michael Parsons. Well, four years. I said three years. He's only been in the uh, uh, How long has Michael Parsons been in the league? I don't know. Since 21. Okay. I'd gone back too many years, I guess. Yeah. You're compiling. Uh, so we don't know how to put 23 years now. That's not going to work. <laughs> <laughs> he's definitely not going to be on the top of that list. Well, I know one person who hates him and that's uh that's bill belichick because he's like no one's uh lawrence taylor i mean tj watt is just goodness tj watt's amazing okay so michael parsons here's the is... thing about tj watt though he's got those watt jeans which his muscles are going to outgrow his bones and he's not going to stay on the field michael parsons is fourth behind tj watt number one miles garrett and nick bosa those guys are good i mean he's ahead of max crosby and and, and they play every play aaron Donald. all those guys Every situation they play, the biggest knock on Michael Parsons is he does not play well against the run. I don't think there are a lot of knocks against Michael Parsons. That, that's a big one. When you can game plan against him and run. How many sacks did he have last year? 14 and a half. 
Hmm. 14 and a half. How many plays did he play? I gotta look that up. He's been very healthy. You know, he's been healthy. I'm not yeah, I'm not questioning his health. I'm not questioning his pass. I'm not questioning his pass. I'm not hold on. I'm not questioning his passing ability. Right? But you're willing to give up 20 plus million dollars for 14 sacks and not be able to stop the run. Teams are gonna run the football against you, and you're still gonna be in some trouble. He played more snaps than anybody on defense. Mm. Right. And and where did they rank? Wait, where did they rank stopping the run? I don't know. What, 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 what am I, a stat machine? You, you, you got, like, requests up the wazoo. <laughs> you just said he doesn't play all the plays. I just told you he plays all no, the plays. No, 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 no. I don't mean all the – I mean, he plays the pass plays. You're wearing thin with me. No, he plays the pass plays, but on the run plays, he's MIA. So he may be on the field, so but when it's running the football, he's MIA. Okay, so you're saying he's not effective, but he's on the field. Right. That's what I'm saying. I'm talking about when you're talking about playing. I'm not actually talking about physically playing. I'm saying, where is he when the teams decide, you know what? We're not going to pass the ball. We're going to run it at him. And you're paying $20 million for that? What's the harm of the call? No. Just inquire. The harm of the call is you know you're going to have to pay him. I'm not worried about that. Of course not. Of I'm not course worried. not. You like this is this is crazy talk. This is absolutely lunacy that what? you would pay $20 million for a guy who ha- has made no contribution or lunacy. very little, very little contribution stopping the run. He's gonna their get paid team was, their team was horrible stopping the run mm-hmm. to where they were so bad stopping the run, he became ineffective in the pass rush. I Do mean, you not understand that, that? Not that ineffective. He had 14 sacks. They played 17 games. It's not that bad, though. <sighs> Take a break. Back up to this.
All right, welcome back, everybody. Tobin and Leroy here with you, 560 WQAM. Got another pair of Heat and Raptors tickets to give away. So we'll uh, get to that. Heat are back in action tonight, taking on the Atlanta Hawks. Very banged up. Trey Young hasn't played in a while. He's got a ligament tear. Sadiq Bay's out with the ACL. They very, very banged up. There's reports today uh, from Mark Stein that they're going to trade one of their backcourt stars this offseason. It's going to be either Trey Young or it's going to be DeJounte Murray. I'm going to guess it's going to be DeJounte Murray because Trey Young is kind of the face of that franchise. But well, uh, it would it would appear that the uh, the Hawks are continuing to still uh, scramble around and uh, and figure things out on how to get back to where they were with Trey Young, which was back at the Eastern Conference Finals. But uh, look, unfortunately for him, that might have just been a, a very uh, a, a great run. I don't know if they could uh, do that with uh, with building around him with the the pieces that they got. Dejounte Murray is certainly a really good player. I mean, he killed the Heat this year. We remember that. Yeah. Um, Oh, that was a crusher. Remember when there was whispers that he was coming to Miami? And I do remember the whispers about that. And I'm guessing the reason he can't stay on a team is because he doesn't play defense. Because in San Antonio, he had great numbers. DeJounte Murray? DeJounte yeah. Murray's a good defender. Trey is not a good defender. Ooh, well, then why does he can't stay on a team? Well, he didn't. They 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 they, they, they got a haul for him in San, from San Antonio. Then why is he going to be out in Atlanta now? Because nobody, nobody can, you can't, like, nobody makes this Trey Young happy. Like, everybody they put around him, they're like, oh, same thing happened with John Collins. Everybody's like, oh. So maybe you could get to the point oh, where you're I like, wanna, hey. Ooh, I wouldn't be some John Collins. He loves John. Yeah, you love John Collins. So yeah. are they going to realize that maybe the problem isn't everybody else? I don't know, Dan. That's going to be an interesting question if they do get to that point. He fired Nate McMillan. I know. One of the most respected I know. people I just know. in general in basketball. Um, all right, let's get to the heat. There's a couple of injury notes um, from Anthony Chang of the Miami Herald. Heat guard Terry Rozier did not go through shoot around today. He says that he is a game time decision tonight. Um, so that's not fantastic. And then Duncan Robinson is already uh, ruled out for tonight, Leroy, but he has uh, commented on his injury. It doesn't sound great. It doesn't sound great. From uh, Ira Winderman, Duncan Robinson says uh, his back was exasperated by return, says he needs to again take a step back. Not sure on his time frame for return. He said, uh, and Ira was saying, quote, is back to the drawing board and anything is possible on his time frame. Not great. That's not great. That's not great. That's not great. We're not going to see him during the regular season, will we, anymore? And there's only four I mean, games. There's only four games. But you know what know. I mean? Why would he rush back? I mean, you're yeah, pretty much I don't, play in playing. I don't know. I, and the thing that just bums me out, Dan, is he had such a good year this year. He very clearly has not been himself since coming back. Um, and you can tell, like, Duncan Robinson is a guy, he flies all over the court with, you know, the, with, with trying to get around screens, with cutting, with moving. And he just did not look like him. He's not a stand in the corner He's not type moving. of guy. He's yeah, not he's moving, not and then moving. he can't even shoot. Yeah, it looks it, so bad. It's uh, it, it's really, really a bummer to see that. Uh, Duncan Robinson also said he was not able to fully feel like himself, so that doesn't sound great. That Duncan Robinson is uh is dealing with all this right now. It sucks. But, Actually, it sucks because with the year that he had, you wanted to see him continue to be able to make an impact on this team, and now it just seems like the only thing that's going to 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 heal him is time. You see what I mean? Which is the worst possible. Yeah, they don't have necessarily unless, uh, you know, the, the, they don't know if they're going to have time. And uh, they don't have a ton of guys who could shoot it like him. They, they just got Tyler back. But, uh, you know, you're going to need, I guess, we're going to go back to the well of Patty Mills, who was building a brick house every time he was on the court with the Heat. Right. So, great accent, though. Great accent. Love that voice. Good day, mate. He's a very eloquent speaker. Very eloquent. Very eloquent, very uh I mean, like I just I just like hearing his voice. It makes me happy. Oh, okay. What a year. This year is so sneaky. So we got Terry Rozier that has a bad neck. We have Duncan Robinson who has a bad back. Tyler Hero has had bad a lot of things, but his ankle was the most recent thing. Jimmy, what's Jimmy's been his foot? He's been dealing with a foot. A foot. Bam is dealing with a back too. Okay. Kevin loves dealing with old. Yeah. Okay. Trying to think of who 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 we can rely on here. Yovi, kid, 
Haywood Highsmith. Hakez, Hakez has hit the wall. Yeah, Hakez. but Hakez, he's just run out of gas. Although it looks a little bit better the last couple of games. A little, uh, bit, he's a little, little better. Gas. He plays with <laughs> a, a lot better. of energy. He plays with a ton of energy, though. A little better. Not all the way back, but he's looked a little better. So, no, it's not great. All right, we'll take a break. Mix things up coming up next.
All right, welcome back, everybody. Tobin, Dude, and Leroy here with you. Five, I just, six, QAM. I just opened my mind, my mouth, and my belly to something amazing. You're into the Micah Parsons trade. Go on. Go on. Uh, you showed us this last week. Yeah, you showed us Did that. I? You're on reruns of snacks. Also, could you do it away from the microphone? We're like right there, ASMR style. Like we're literally like mic'd up in your chips. I'm chewing with my mouth closed, though. Yeah, mm. no, I'm not talking about you chewing. I'm talking about in the bag. <laughs> oh no, I'm done. I'm done. Anyway, uh, what do we got today in the mixed bag, Dan Day, which is brought to us by Broward Health. Well, into your future. First things first, want to give a big shout out to our dude, dude, Kevin. I met him at Funky Buddha last night. He says he listens to the podcast every single day. Loves you guys. Awesome. Thank you, Kevin. Appreciate awesome. it. Awesome. I got That's a couple good. of Leroy's this morning at the gym. Uh -oh. Those drive-bys. Wait till you have everybody uh, saying, hey, Leroy, open up your mind. Free your mind about the Micah Parsons. No, uh, they won't. They, most, more people will say, I 100% agree with you. No, they won't. Definitely I not. Promise you. Definitely I promise not. you. Definitely Nobody not. just wants a pass rusher, dude. Okay. Yeah. No. 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 Nobody wants a star. That's right. No. That it has nothing to do with being a star. Hey, did you watch? Oh, wait, any, I, 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 did I'm you just, watch any Dallas football last? last you know season? the numbers. You know. You know they were. They were. Their numbers weren't bad last year, right? Huh? They weren't. They weren't. Did weren't. you see what happened to him at the end of the year? They I started running you're... the ball at Michael Parsons. Okay. And then what happened at the end of the year? Do you think it was just Michael Parsons, or no. did do you think teams make some certain adjustments, just like it did with the Dolphins? Do you think that the Dolphins yeah. can't get better next year? Oh no! But I again. Yeah, I believe that. But I can't quit that head coaching here's, job. Here's here's the difference. Here's the difference. We're talking about with the Dolphins scheme, right? When you talk about Dallas, I'm talking about an individual. Until he makes the commitment to stopping the run. Interesting. I'm not paying him twenty million. Okay. He'll what make you it. Got no, speaking about the podcast, you can go back and listen on the podcast or you use the rewind feature on the Odyssey app. Just a few minutes ago, we had Peter Pratt on. He was talking Marlins. I wanted to isolate some of the sound about some of the things he, or at least one thing he had to say about the Marlins real quick. Yes. Where's these young, sexy sticks that you can just add in and just feel good about? I agree. Oh, why not? <laughs> it's a great, it's a great day. We're all hey, these. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. Sticks. Here we go. Wait, hold up. Let's see. Does the accent, does the really accent make it that much more appealing? Yeah, once again, let's run it back. Here we go. Let's hear it again. Where's these young, sexy sticks that you can just add in and just feel good about? Where are they? <laughs> I want to feel good about these young, sexy sticks. Yeah. I need uh, something to look forward to. You guys. I love how that line just just came out to you. How could it not? It was. It was the. the I mean, the man, he's right. The man speaking the truth. Our our sticks have been so unsexy, except for Brian De La Cruz's <laughs> stick yesterday. Yeah, I mean, like, he's a faithful stick, but is he sexy? Does he rev up the engine? I don't know. <laughs> Another guy that always revs the engine, Charles Barkley, talking about maybe a little more controversial of a topic than we thought it would be yesterday, the eclipse. Tobin, did you take a little sneak peek like you Dude, said you would? Can I tell you something? What a bummer this eclipse was. I didn't even realize it wasn't even dark out. No. And then people were saying, oh, we're not going to be able to see it because it's cloudy. Didn't even notice it. Come was, on. They were like, oh, yeah, the eclipse hey, is over. I'm like, it is? There were people in Cleveland that sent me pictures through the clouds. And you I couldn't see it. I didn't even notice it. Didn't even notice. So I didn't look at because I just thought it was regular daylight. And I wouldn't be an idiot and look at regular daylight. So, no, I, I didn't. I didn't well, melt my eyes. But I saw plenty of uh, Josh Hart was asking that. Trey Young was asking that on social media. Am I allowed to just look at this uh, this eclipse? But I didn't even notice when it was eclipse time. Well, like most people, Charles Barkley had an eclipse take. Well, y'all, some of them losers standing outside watching that today. They're not losers. Yes, they are. It, no, it they're not. Hey, time. we've all seen darkness before. Stop it. No, no. Not, a, not in the daylight. No, no. Come on, man. Come on, <laughs> Chuckster. I just hate on the eclipse. Come on, Yo, stop listen, it. I saw a loser standing watching your blip. <laughs> <laughs> they were outside. Have you seen Chuck's blip? <laughs> 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 So you're, so you're not a fan. You're not a fan uh, of the Well, I'm not going to sit outside like an idiot and wait on the darkness. Did you not wait on your wait blimp? Till, I could have waited. It's going to be dark when you go outside. Can, can I ask you a second? Did you ask your family to wait on your blimp outside? I was trying to get my grandson to watch. See, there it is. So what are you talking about? 
Hey, the eclipse gonna happen again. I ain't gonna ever have another blip. <laughs> Boy, this was a That's very a good thing. This was a very worthwhile segment. Uh, it is. Uh, it, look, it's. It, it was uh, all the rage yesterday. I feel like I didn't experience anything. You know what I start? I'm realizing now. What's that? You're white, Chuck. What? <laughs> you say some ridiculous stuff too. You're white, Chuck. Do we really need people like out there live, <laughs> live on the scene? White live Chuck. on the scene. Here's we the got, we got dark chocolate, we got white chocolate, and we got dark Chuck, and we got white Chuck. You white oh. Chuck. He's right. You know, too much, too much made over this. No, I mean, dude, we what? did a radio show outside the last time it happened. I feel like last time we actually got an effect of this. I don't no, know. We got I dark. Think... We got dark. It got dark. I don't feel like that happened here. I don't no. know. Whatever. I even brought a teaspoon. Sat outside with the special glasses. Yep. Yep. Uh, all right. What else uh, we got in the mixed bag, Dan Day? Well, the Marlins are dealing with it. It seems like everybody's dealing with it. I don't know how pitchers used to pitch back in the day and never get hurt, especially pitchers that would pitch nine innings, ten innings at a time, pitch every three or four days. Nowadays, everyone gets hurt. Nowadays, everyone has their explanation on why everyone's getting hurt. The most recent person to try to help explain the rash of injuries for pitchers, a guy that's one of the great pitchers of all time, Justin Verlander. I think the game has changed a lot. I think it'd be easiest to hear and blame the pitch clock. You know, I think in reality, uh, you put everything together and um, everything has a little bit to, a little bit of influence. The biggest thing is the, the the style of pitching has changed so much. You know, everybody's throwing as hard as they possibly can and um, spinning the ball as hard as they possibly can. And, you know, it's hard to deny those results. Obviously, uh, how can you? It's 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 a double-edged sword. How can you tell somebody to go out there and not do that when they're capable of throwing a hundred and, and, you know, this, this, this young guy comes up and throws a pitch 95 and gives up a big homer and everybody's like, what the hell, man? So something needs to change. Something does need to change. I mean, listen, Verlander could gas him up with the best of them, but he didn't use it the entire game. It's crazy. More knuckleballers, Charlie Huff. Yep. R.A. Dickey. Tim Wakefield. Tim Wake, R.I.P. Yep. Of course. I, I just think that, he, he pointed out, too, guys want to throw as hard as possible, spend it as much as possible. It doesn't mean that you can't be effective and last. And I think that's what is lost, right? Like, you know, when you play football, you're not running full speed all the time. A lot of times you're using your speed to control what you're doing or to, you, you know what I mean? So you have a little bit left. A wide receiver doesn't take off running full speed every time. They can time that up. But they change speeds. They change direction. They and weave in and out. So they can use their athletic ability and their ability to stop and start to help them get open. And, and I think pitching, everybody comes out and, like, and, and it's baseball's fault. That's baseball's fault. Because exactly. the only it's, thing they talk about is how the, how hard a guy can throw. They don't talk matter. about how good a pitcher he is. Yeah, it doesn't matter if you can't hit the broadside of a barn. If you can throw 110 miles per hour, we'll work with you're that. the greatest pitcher in the world. We can't right. work the best prospect. But all those pitchers, they come in, they throw that ball hard as they can, and what ends up happening? They have to back away and become better pitchers. I think Because right a now, lot of those guys that throw extremely hard throw a straight ball. I think it's right now like one in three major league pitchers have had Tommy John surgery. It's a crazy, it's a yep. it's a crazy number about how much this has affected everybody. And here's the other thing is as fans, how come we all know where it's going? Like, uh oh, he's got elbow soreness. Oh, that's Tommy John in a couple of months, right? Yet they're trying not to do it. Just go ahead on and do it. Yeah, just do it. You get it over with. Just get it over with. That's like uh, like there was somebody yesterday who the same thing happened. They it was basically the same thing that happened to Yuri. They're like, oh, he's no structural damage, you know, he's fine. And I'm like, yes. that's the exact same thing that happened to Yuri. Exact Correct. same this thing for Tommy John surgery. And the only reason why it had he had he doesn't need Tommy John surgery because you stopped him before he threw that one hundred mile an hour pitch that snapped it. So you're gonna sit him down for two or three weeks or a month or whatever, and he's gonna come back and long toss and long toss. He's gonna go back on the mound, try to hit a hundy, and then he's done. This is this is the story. That's the Tommy John story. It's tough, man. Um, 
Finally, give us one more, Dan, before we uh, wrap up the mixed bag. Yesterday, a big day for college basketball. John Calipari, he's leaving Kentucky to go to Arkansas. But the real hot name in college coaching, Dan Hurley, wins the second national championship with UConn in just two years. Naturally, he was asked, do you want to stay at UConn forever? And naturally, you probably know what he said. You're not going to entertain any conversations <laughs> with anybody else that might have a job coming open tomorrow. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I don't think that's a concern. <laughs> you know, my wife, you should have her answer that. What does that mm -hmm. mean? Mm -hmm. uh, listen, Miss Terry ran Nick Saban out of here. Yep. So, I mean, we don't know. Okay, so somebody get Miss Hurley on the uh, on the fo on the phone. I'll tell you one thing, man. Like, that happened with Billy Donovan. Like, remember Billy Donovan after winning his, because he's the first one to do back-to-back -back since the Gators. Right. Um, who's to say NBA teams are going to be calling for this guy? Um, You know what? I I would say this. It's weird for coaching, right? Because you might be making, say, $2 million in college, right? An NBA team would give you five years, $10 million a year. Even if you get fired after two, you're going to get that money. Mm -hmm. So that's why a lot of them are leaving, even though they know that the situation where they are is much better. Right? He could coach there probably forever. For as long as he wants to coach, he could be the coach of UConn. Yeah. But, but how long would it take him to make $40 million? I think the thing that sucks, though, with the we saw this with Calipari, right? Like, who thought that Calipari was ever going to stay out as well, wear out his welcome with Kentucky? I know he's a little, maybe. So, like, it's never going to get better than back to back national championships for him. Yeah. I would, say, I would do it while the iron's hot. Why the iron's hot, dude. Yeah. Especially, especially if he can go to the league, you know? Right. Well, you know what Kentucky's, I mean, you know what Connecticut's probably doing. Hey, uh, why don't you come see us? We, you know, we, we want to make this right for you. We want to make what? sure. I don't want him to go because I don't want him to steal Karan Butler from us. All of a sudden, he becomes head coach of uh, UConn. You think? Why not? Mm. Got the experience. Yeah, that's true. But I, I would, I would say this, like, there's a it's a different animal coaching in the NBA, right? But to his credit, if you look at UConn's basketball team with all the size and the length they have throughout the fl the floor, they are the closest thing to an NBA team that we've seen with all the length, how they play defense, how they shoot the three. They like so the transition might not be as difficult as you would think. Did you guys see the video yesterday of Calipari walking his dog with a stroller? What? Yeah, they were trying to like get a comment on him, and he's like walking his dog, and they're like the the reporters like, "You got anything to say, John?" And he looks ridiculous. He's pushing the dog. Uh, mean, nothing now. Nothing now. Hey, what? We got to take his man car for that, right? <laughs> <laughs> pushing a dog in a stroller? Yeah. Oh what kind yeah. Of dog was that? What kind of uh, dog? I didn't see the dog. I only saw the dog stroller. It don't matter. How big is it? You ain't got a Great Dane up in there. I don't know, dude. <laughs> you got uh, uh, Scooby. I have never put Scooby in a stroller, so no. I don't believe you. I can promise you that. I had a I had a dog in a wheelbarrow. You said you didn't kill that bird, though. I put a dog in the back on a wheel on one of those little, uh, you know, the little kid uh, barrels or whatever that you just pull and they sit in the back of. <sighs> Like a like a rickshaw? No, like this is a little four wheel like red. Like you thing. put it behind your bike? No, I said I was pulling it. Oh, okay. <laughs> yeah, you, you know you put your kid back there and you pull him around or whatever. And one time I was walking a damn dog and he wouldn't cooperate, so I just put him in the back of that and let's go. If you guys want to go to Heat Raptors right now, caller seven to our contest line 305-567-0560. 305-567-0560. 5670560 caller 7 gets a pair of tickets to Heat Raptors final hour coming up next
All right, welcome back. Tobin and Leroy here with you, 560 WQAM. Take you up until 2 o'clock here on the program. Let's get to our headlines. Brought to you by the new Palmetto Ford Truck Super Center. Why buy a truck at a car store? Palmetto Ford. Eat no trucks. Uh, Leroy Tiger Woods uh, today at the media session for the Masters. Asked about the possibility of winning. He says, quote, if everything comes together, I think I can get one more. <clears throat> um. If I may, you, you know, may. you know how much I love golf and I love Tiger. The man has never played four rounds of golf in a tournament since he's been back. So what things have to come together? His legs? No, he first has to play four rounds. He doesn't even know, you know, like just to make it through four rounds is a start. That's not even counting how you got to play. You see what I'm saying? Yeah. So do I want Tiger to win? Absolutely. But the reality of it is, is that you haven't played four rounds of golf in so long. Then if you're in the thick of it, because here's how it's gone so far. He's played one bad round and one good round, but makes the cut. Then he comes out on Saturday and he struggles and he's in a lot of pain and then he withdraws. So I need to see something different than that to even know, like, give me two rounds. Give me two rounds and then going into the weekend, starting off good and just let it be bad golf that eliminates you from the tournament, not pain. Yeah, it, it's really rough watching right him, because he really labors through it i mean he start he starts off good right he's walking things look great he labors a little bit that second round then when he gets to that third round it's like is he gonna make it so i get it but yeah i want i i want him to be healthy for four rounds first tiger woods talking about winning Tiger Woods right now is plus fifteen thousand to win the Masters. You can make it a hundred thousand. That's crazy. You can make it a hundred thousand. Favorite is Scotty Scheffler plus three seventy five. Rory's plus nine hundred. John Rahm plus one thousand. This is the Hard Rock app, by the way. Um, um, hold on, hold on. This Xander is gonna be, Shoffley plus thirteen hundred. This is going to be this is going to be one of my picks. I pick five golfers every year. Mm -hmm. Right, Wyndham Clark. I am not dismissing this dude ever again. Plus 3,000. Yeah. Right. Now, here's what makes it difficult. There's only been one player to win the Masters his first time out. So if you look at all these guys, in most cases, most betters would eliminate those guys. You, you see what I'm saying? There's only been one guy, and it was in the 70s. So this is Wyndham Clark's first Masters? I'm not sure. I'm no. not sure, but that's why it might be 3,000 because the dude has been on fire early on this year. Yeah, he's in uh, Matthew Fitzpatrick's plus 3,000, Justin Thomas plus 3,000, pl uh, Tony Finau's plus 3,000, Victor Hovland's plus 3,000. Um, so he's in that realm. How is uh, um, the kid you might ought to pay attention to is the one that just won, and that is uh, uh, was it Akshay but Batia Batia? Hmm. Um, he's built like a seven iron, <clears throat> he right? is plus 7,500. He's built like a seven iron, right? <laughs> he hits the snot out of the ball. He's only 22 or 23 years old, he's been a pro since he was 17. Um, but I, I got to tell you, the, there's two things that's promising. First of all, Scotty Scheffler can putt now. So, like, that's why he's the favorite. Because the only thing that's held him back is is has been putting. Rory has been putting well, too. But he has that one swing double that is just crazy, right? He's hitting the ball crooked, which is unheard of. And it's not even his driver. He drives the ball better than anybody, but he can't hit his irons where he wants to. Um, a couple other guys. I mean, there, there, there's some guys in there. I, I would always, um, Brooks Kepka's not in it, is he? Um, 
I think he might be. No, I think I saw him on the odds. Let me see. Yeah. Um, I uh, I would say that there's a different level of plus seventeen fifty. There's a different level of motivation for two guys. Brooks Koepka won a major last year and he was on live, right? But that heat is on John Rahm now. Yeah, a lot of John Rahm uh, stuff coming out of this weekend with him saying that uh, Liv should go to 72 holes and you know yes. all this they should they should and 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 guess how much they paid him for this weekend or the whole thing no to go to live didn't, didn't you tell me it was half a mil half a bill half a bill half a bill I mean yeah you ain't Crazy. making that golf right um I but so if I had two guys that people probably are just ignored just because they don't think you know because they're on live it it would be um, Kepka and John Rahm. I think John Rahm wants to, you know, he was number two in the world before he left, so that game ain't gone, and he's plus a million. I I definitely go with with John Rahm, but you got to include Scotty Scheffler in all of your, uh, in all of your things. Here's the kicker, though: when you do the pools, the pools are based on rankings, right? So mm-hmm. keep in mind, the live players are not ranked worldwide. So you're going to be able to pick those two guys, and it's going to be from the pool of three or four you get to select of others. Uh, quickly, a rundown of tonight at uh, 7.05, Marlins, Yankees, Pucks on the Hill. <sighs> Marlins mm. are one and ten. Yankees are nine and two. So all right, mm. good luck tonight, boys. Need baseball to happen. Uh the Panthers, they're on the ice at seven o'clock. You can hear that at AM seven ninety. Bob's in net tonight. And uh you guys will uh, be able to hear that on our sister station if you want to check that out. Meanwhile, the Heat, seven thirty from Atlanta, taking on the Hawks, six fifteen is preheat with Solana and Tommy Tag. They'll get you ready for the uh the action there. Injury wise, Duncan Robinson has been ruled out. He told reporters today. Uh, and that his back has not Ow. been right. Back to the drawing board was the term I believe he used, which is not great. And uh, Terry Rozier is uh, dealing with a neck. He is a game time decision. Did not participate in shoot around. So that is that. Lyric, can you get a weather update from the Demesman and Dover sure law firm? Your attorneys.com free consultation twenty four seven. Call them at eight six six nine five four. More. Who is breezy? Is breezy. 15, 20 mile an hour breeze. Let me get a direction for you. Looks like it's coming from the south, southwest. Wait, no, 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 no. That's south, southeast. Mm. At about 15, 20, might be gusting even a little bit higher than that. It is, I would say, partly cloudy to cloudy. The sun's poking out, but I see mostly clouds. And I would say the temperature is going to be right around 83, 84 degrees because it's kind of warming up a little bit. Those cool mornings that we enjoyed the last um, few days are long gone. There you go. He's a golfer, ladies and gentlemen. All right, we'll take a quick break. Coming up, the damage is done, my friend. That's next.
All right, welcome back, everybody. Tobin and Leroy here with you, 560 WQAM. Take you guys up until 2 here on the program. Here's what I got for damages done. Scott Foster, (laughs) you are a bum. And your stupid association, your referee organization, and all those clowns over at the NBA who think you can fix my feelings with your two-minute report. You know what I'm going to start doing? The Tobes Minute Report after every single game. I'll tell you where they screwed up. I don't need officials to tell me where they screwed up. I knew that they screwed up. They blew it. They ruined it for the heat. And here's where they go, oh, we're sorry. It's not even an apology. You, You just say what you did wrong. How about going up to Eric Spolstra and, and letting it, you know what they should do, Leroy? You know how Eric Spolstra always has to say, NBA, do not fine me? Mm-hmm. Where does Scott Foster get fined? Where's his fine? How about he pays Eric Spolstra for his damages? Damage, yeah. my friend. Nothing's going to make me feel better about this, especially with that jackass calling games. Whoa. What do you got, Leroy? Damage is done, my friend. All right, I'm glad you've come to the reason why the Heat lost. Um, me too. Same with you. I'm glad you have too. <laughs> My damage is done. Goes to uh, who's the uh, Connecticut coach again? Dan Hurley. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Right. Yep. He was trying to get the attention of the official, so he went onto the court and pushed his own player yep. into the view of the ref. And I'm like, wait a minute. That can't be legal. You can't just do that. Yes. He just pushed him. So he could get to the official. And they just kept going. Like nothing happened. He was d up his own guy. So, yes. I, I guess his damage is done, but wasn't done. Hell, I don't know what to call it. But I'm like, damage is done, my friend. Something should have happened. Wild. J Fig, what damage is done for you? Kind of wish Marcos was here. No offense, Dan, but this story has Marcos written all over it. Mm -hmm. Apparently, Jason Kelsey's retirement may or may not be damage is done. Oh, he's trying to make a comeback. He's trying to make a comeback, but not in football, guys. The WWE. Of course. I can totally see that. The damage is done, my friend. He made an appearance oh. at WrestleMania 40. And look at this. Well, it was in Philly. Look at this. He looks like a WWE guy. He does look like a WWE well, he guy. Came he in, it's pretty brilliant. He came in with the mask on, so you didn't know at first right. who he was. Agreed. If you see in this picture. Well, he who's the little hair. peanut next to him? I think that's uh, Rey Mysterio. It was Rey Mysterio, yes, one of the all-time so greatest he wrestlers. To help I mean, he's tiny, him. right? Yeah, yeah, he's, yeah, yeah. he's okay. a high flyer. Right. Call him a high okay. flyer. Okay. He ain't high flying nothing right now because he built like a meatball. So it was him and Lane Johnson who went and surprised the crowd on Saturday. And they went in to help Ray Mysterio and his partner Andrade beat his son. Who would you want locally if they had WrestleMania in Miami? Uh, who would you like to make an appearance? Oh, man. If, if we had to go with trash talkers. I would almost go Dada. <laughs> but Dada? He's too old. Uh, uh, I was thinking more of the realm of like Jimmy Butler. Would you like to see Jimmy do it? Uh, Tyreek he's not Hill. built like a wrestler. Yeah, he's not built like he's that. A moose. No, he's not. He's tall. That's it. He's not a moose. He's just tall. He's a moose, dude. Dude, they... would you see Tyreek Hill? What about doing? Bam? No. What? 6'9 and 220? 230? That's not big. Dude, these right. guys are like, the guys that are even close to their height are 300. I feel that, like no. more realistically, it would be Tyreek Hill. Well, I, all right, but I don't really need them to look like a wrestler. Just who's a fun cameo you want to see? A fun cameo? But they got to be able to talk trash. So I'm going to go with, it. Would, it if, if we're just not looking at body type, we're just going trash talking and guys that could play the part, Jalen Ramsey. Or Tyreek Hill. Okay. I like I'd like to you see you guys Joe. ignore me when I talk. No, I said I, that's, why, wait, three times. That's, why, that's why I added Tyreek Hill, Jennifer, because you mentioned it. 
I'd like Holy to see Jeffrey Loria slam through a table. That'd oh, that would be nice. great. I would love that. Are you kidding <laughs> what? me? The table, the table probably wouldn't break. Uh, what damage is done for you, Dan Day? Dallas Cowboys. We know you're not that good. You'll do okay in the regular season. Trying to make everything okay. We heard the whispers that Michael Parsons, you know, maybe not happy there. They're not happy with him. There's also the damage he's done, my friend. By you, Tobin, that he might fit here well in Miami. Yep, those are whispers. I'm starting. <laughs> CD Lamb, obviously not happy there, saying, I haven't missed any workouts. I've been doing what I'm supposed to do, but the damage is done. We know who the Cowboys are. We know how bad they are. The damage is done, my friend. We know that CD Lamb probably won't be there very much longer, and maybe Micah Parsons, maybe. Time to bring Here's him up. the deal, though, Dan. Think about this. What star has left Dallas? They always end up getting taken care of. Think about it. What star has left Dallas? In the prime of their career? Yeah. Because uh, I'll say Emmett Smith did leave, but it was. No, that day. was at the end. Same thing with Ezekiel Elliott, right? What star in Dallas has not been taken care of and has left in his prime? No. Amari Cooper. Uh, They actually traded him, though. He's out. He's gone. Gone he, is gone. Was he in this front? Oh, yeah, he did have 265 in Cleveland. <laughs> Good. Uh, All right. If you guys want to go to Heat and Raptors, caller five right now to 305-567-0560. Caller five to 305-567-0560. You'll want a pair of tickets to Heat and Raptors. Regular season finale on Sunday afternoon, 1 o'clock tip. If you guys want to go 305-567-0560, caller five. We'll get a pair of tickets to Heat Raptors. The Marlins have been a disaster thus far. And uh, we talked a little earlier in the show with our guy Peter Pratt from Locked On Marlins. Delightful accent. Uh, if you guys missed it, we uh, chop it up with him coming up next.
to the Toyota of Hollywood guest line. Shop hundreds of Toyotas indoors in one of America's largest showrooms, the Toyota of Hollywood on 441 between Hollywood and Sheridan. One of our favorites, our guy across the pond, Peter Pratt, the host of the Lockdown Marlins podcast, which you guys get on all your podcast platforms. Watch it on YouTube. Oh, he Peter. upgraded. Oh, he did upgraded. Nice Look at the boy. Let's go. Up. That's looking good, dude. How uh, how are you, buddy? How is how are things? This has been a rough start to the year. Uh, personally, I'm doing well. I've got the upgrade here. Look, look yes, at this. The blue that. vibes. You know, I'm just sitting here sipping champagne. What else is there to do? But um, yeah, boy, boy, oh boy, it has been a rough start for the Marlins. Is anyone still watching? <laughs> it's only the 9th of April, and is everyone tuned out? I don't know. Well, oh, they crazy. play games in two hours, so you, you don't have to watch along. <laughs> You're not invested oh, much. That was crazy yesterday. Fast one last night. Yeah, yeah. it was. <laughs> um, what is, uh, I guess, been the thing that's disappointed you the most so far this season? I felt like this was a year that, you know, kind of had a little sneaky optimism. You know, we were talking about having a lineup that was deeper, was uh, was going to be a little, uh, uh, you know, be able to frustrate pitchers. And, you know, this rotation, this pitching situation has just kind of felt like it's unraveled everything. What, what have you made of it so far, Peter? I think that's it, isn't it? Just like literally before the season started, you know, all of a sudden pitching injuries galore. And it was just like, it's just set everything back. Like the rotation's gone. Next thing is the bullpen's gone. It's just so tough. Like four fifths of the rotation out, it's tough. But the offense wasn't upgraded enough. Like you have to look back at the off season and they didn't do enough. They didn't do enough with this roster. It's, that's the disappointment. That's been my disappointment. I've been covering this team every day through the off season. I mean, I had nothing to talk about. I, I should have just started up again in, you know, last week of March, and that would have been it. I would have you covered should've, it. You yeah, should have done Peter, that. Peter, what did you expect when they brought the guy from Tampa oh, no. to run the team, right? Like, you oh, no. knew it was going to be a situation where, okay, they're not – they're trying not to spend money. They're bringing in guys who can kind of get away with not spending money. So some of the guys you're going to bring in are be guys that were good two years ago that they hope hit lightning in a bottle again. My question is, with all the things that have gone on year after year after year, every time they bring in a new regime or a new head guy or a new coach, they say these words, we got to rebuild our farm system. We've been hearing that for 15 years. When is it going to be built? There's, there's the question. I mean, as soon as you got a raise guy in, Leroy, you know, you knew the drill, right? Like right. it was, there's going to be another rebuild as soon as, and I get it. And it's easy to look a bit north and go, that does feel sustainable, but it's going to take time to get there. Like we're talking five years away. Right. And this club has just been in the postseason right. as the five seed. Like maybe now is time. I know Sandy's missing, but maybe now is time to invest. But nope. It's that's going to rebuild and Skip Schumacher is going to be that's the big news, obviously, recently as well. And things seem to be unraveling super rapid. We're 11 games in and it feels like a complete disaster here for the Marlins. And this is going to be a tough year. You, yeah, I think it would be even more scarier if Sandy gets healthy and then they use Sandy to rebuild the farm system. I mean, how much you got to look around the roster and think. How many of the guys on the roster actually can you get significant pieces back? I know Sandy's definitely one, Lozado, Arias, and Jazz. But beyond that, honestly, you look around and you think, is anyone giving up anything of note for Brian De La Cruz and Jesus Sanchez? Well, we just look at this over, people. We're like, man, they had their chance mm -hmm. to do that with trading Yelich. And I know it's different regimes or whatever, but they blew it so hard with the Jeter era because you basically oh, traded – four studs and all you really got out of it was sandy like that's crazy that's like i feel like by accident i could look at the rankings and do a better job than that like to to, to go and trade real muto yelich stanton and ozuna and all i got for it is is one ace is crazy is crazy and even you know getting in jazz like you had to give up maybe uh the best arm of, a, of them all so it, it's it is a little depressing to look down the barrel of that and say, "Wow, they're going to have to really revamp this again," which I guess um, goes to the Skip Schumacher thing. So you get this news over the weekend that they voided his deal. The news comes out today, I guess that that was to do Skip a solid, but none of it really makes me feel better because they're <laughs> reporting that like, well, he was pissed that they got rid of Kim Ang. 
<laughs> I said that on my show. I mean, you could see it coming, right? Kim Ang gave Skip exactly the tools that was needed, and Skip managed a blinder. I mean, boy, oh boy, Skip, manager of the year. Stunning performance for the Marlins to be. There was a bit of luck. I get it. But Skip did everything. To, you know, sorry, Kim gave everything to Skip that he needed. Soon as Kim was gone, you know, Skip knew, like Leroy's calling out, like you, <laughs> the raise models coming in, and Skip obviously, you know, blew his blew his gasket at that one. And you know, however they want to dress this up, like they've had a disagreement in this space, and Skip's going to be gone. Which again, more talent. I guess it's off the field talent at this point, but more talent going to be leaving the organization. So, I mean, could they even trade Skip Schumacher at this point? I mean, anyone could be sold. Who right. knows? They, listen, if they could, they'd try. They, they it would. Like, it feels yeah. like the way it would. But, like, I don't even – this is the thing, man, that's that's kind of frustrated. We were talking about, like, Loria back last segment. And it's like, you mm. know, I feel like back in that era, like, yeah, they were bums running the organization, but at least they were my bums, and I knew who to be mad at for years after years. And I'm just frustrated at this point because I just feel rudderless because it's like, who do I get mad at? Do I get mad at Bruce Sherman? Am I mad at J Jeter's gone? I can't be pissed at him anymore. Mm -hmm. Kim Ang, they 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 kicked out the door. Peter Bendix has been here for three seconds. People want to get mad at Skip Schumacher. It's like, what did you expect? You know, this is, of course. So I just feel like it's one of these things where, like, you feel like you're yelling into at, at clouds. Like, who, who are you pissed <laughs> at of, over all this? This is it. Who do you, who do you complain to? Who do you moan to? I, I don't even know. I blame Sixto Sanchez, to be honest with you. That's that's the only, <laughs> one, the only it's the only one I could think of. But I mean, Bruce. I, to, to be fair, like for me, Bruce Sherman. This was a perfect. I mean, this was the perfect off season for the Marlins. Everyone was available. All this talent, super cheap. Right. I mean, how much money did you ha actually have to invest to improve this roster? Probably less than five million couple of guys on 1.5 million deals the offense looks miles better Bruce Schirmer wouldn't even do that he spent five million on on Tim Anderson and then wanted to get the money back by trading birdie so yeah. you know this Bruce Sherman for me I need to see more investment and he did say last year we will spend we will spend but I I needed to see investment now and listen I'm a fan of this team now I I, I don't want to be committed to a five-year rebuild again the cycle just continues. Like, let's let's enjoy this window and, and add to it. What's going on? You know what I hate, Peter? I hate when they use the examples of teams that have done it. Mm. So they use, we want to be what the Astros were. We want to be what the Orioles were. And we want to rebuild through our farm system and get it, get some young players or whatever. But what has happened here? Is every time those young players get to where it's time to perform and you're going to get to that, they don't pay them and they get rid of them. So I like, continues. right. Exactly. This is I'm also, Yeah. I'm also confused. Cause like, I, I remember that, like, look, we've been through rebuilds with the Marlins, like, but man, at least they had like, they'd find young guys who could hit. You'd yeah. find guys you could watch every day. Great. They found some overwhelming young pitching. That seems like that's been pretty decent, you know, Sandy, Yuri, and great that Max Myers back. I don't know what's going to happen with Sixto, but man, I can't remember the last young bat that came up and I'm like, man, this guy is going to be our star at least up until he's through arbitration. They haven't had that since the Yelich, since the Yelich Real Muto was done, man. Man, this, this, I mean, what you're talking about here just signals to me what we're seeing right now. During this offseason, all I've heard is Marlins fans talking about this dude called Troy Johnston. Like, that that's the next big hope. He's a 27-year-old dude who's in AAA. I mean, oh, Jesus. come on. I mean, that is – that's wow. just a, a – yeah. you know, just shows just how – to your point, like, just how barren it's been. Like, where's these young, sexy sticks that you can just add in and just feel good about? Right. They just haven't got that. I know they've – Every, you know, team, they've every team has – those one or two studs that yeah. they're almost holding back so they could keep that extra year, right? Yeah. The Marlins looking at their farm system and, like you said, a 27-year-old. Mate, they're looking at the farm system hoping they've only got three years of control in them. Like, that's how bad their farm yeah. <laughs> They don't want six years of control with these dudes. So, yeah, it's it's really barren. We acknowledge that. I think that's the point. It's like it's clear that the farm system has problems, and it, it dates back to that rebuild that is probably the worst rebuild that's ever that's ever been attempted in history. But, I mean, you know, it, it's just it's the frustration of the postseason into this. 
you know, one little spike of excitement, one little spike of entertainment and success, it just brings Marlin's doom. That's just what happens. That's the cycle. A spike, rebuild, doom. Um, and so, yeah, it's going to be a tough one. Yeah, it's a frustrating thing, too, because you never have gotten to see with this organization keeping that going. You know, like I look at people always wondered, is baseball going to work down here? Is it going to be successful down here? Could you keep it going? And I do know a lot of people who grew up idolizing the 03 teams and all those teams but they have never done like for example just here in this market peter is the panthers like the mm. panthers have now put five straight years together of we made the playoffs we're just going to keep building off of it and you can just say that now they have a a thriving you know type of fan base that that people care night in and night out. i really do think that they could make that happen if they go down this route again i don't know if they i don't know if it could take another three four years of this it feels like it's on the edge, doesn't it? And uh, to be honest with you, the Marlins, they feel like they're prioritizing like out of market and international baseball at this point. Yeah. All you get is the hype about the Caribbean series and it's the true. WBC. You know, you know what I mean? Like that's that's what they're hyping it for, is that's you know, they're filling the stands with that. And really, the on the on-field product, I mean, it no one's committed to that at this point. And the Panthers are the perfect example. Like, how the hell is has this market become a hockey town you know it's crazy right and the reason it is is because they commit sustain success and people buy into that you can't just have one flash in the pan and then rebuild and expect the fans to come i mean come on you, that is and bruce I, sherman kind of alluded to that during the I, offseason like i think the fans could do more i'm like bruce you can do more bruce sherman you can do more do more like i don't I know what as long as like i think i came i moved down here the first year tomorrow no, it was 93, right? Was it 93? Yep. yep. Right. Yep. And I can't think of a stretch of, say, three years where this organization has stayed committed to putting a product on the team. That's even after winning World Series, right? It wasn't a three-year, you know, plan. It was let's dump a bunch of money in it, see if it works out, and then get rid of it. They've yeah. never, like, they want to do what all these organizations, these other organizations are doing and rebuild, but they never, ever make the commitment to the young talent because as soon as it's time to get paid, they trade them. This is it. That's the problem, right? That, you know, right. rebuild all you want, but when you hit on these young, sexy studs, pay them. You've done the hard work. You have done the hard work. You have found the difference makers. Pay them to keep them. If you just keep cycling it around, at some point, you're going to run out of luck. Prospects are going to flame out, and you're going to be back in the same situation. Not enough talent. That's the problem. All right, we've been beating them up enough. Has there been, in, in a 1 in 10 start, has there been a couple of bright spots that you've enjoyed? Has there been anything that you have looked at and been like, all right, I'll still enjoy this so far? What what has been the, the thing that you're a little excited about in the start of the season so far? <laughs> it's tough in 1 in 10, isn't it? But... Oof. You know, for me, I'm a big jazz fan. Uh, and I mean, jazz, jazz and Judy are not, not the, the music genre. But, you know, for me with jazz, a grand slam already on the board, a three yeah. run shot, couple of stolen bags. Like, it's like, for me, jazz is the one that excites me. He's, he is a difference maker. We saw it in like the first game or two. He is the difference maker. And unfortunately, that what that means in this current cycle means that jazz is going to be one of the guys that's moved real soon. And he's going to be the, the the true building block piece. I know Arias is fun, but he's very unique and very specific and has less control. But Jazz is is the one that excites me. For me, he has elite upside. And, you know, that has been the moments. Like, Jazz's flashes have been good. Jake Berger's been fine. But man, oh, man, like in a 1-10 start, it's hard. I don't but blame you. I must say, Max Meyer, from a pitching perspective, and let's not forget, Max Meyer wasn't even supposed to be in the rotation he's ended up in this rotation by accident and he's the one that's performing i don't i don't think anyone expected that max meyer looks looks nice he looks you know a young stud another arm that they can work with but yeah overall it's you know some of the highlights have been they've got a new jersey color there's been a solar eclipse in new york and i mean apart from that it's been pretty rough uh, before we get you out of here, Peter, uh, what is your interest level in reading the Jeffrey Loria biography? 
Listen, guys, I haven't been a Marlins fan for long enough to have like the serious amount of distaste associated, oh, you know, towards. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Do you know what I mean? Like, if you've been through it for longer, then I, I completely get it. So, I think I could pick that book up. I'm not really a reader, though. Like, the last book I read, I, actually, the last book I read was a Marlins book, but it was two years ago. It was around the '97 season, um, which was fun. So. I mean, maybe I'll give it a go, but I didn't hear the segment. Was everyone bashing it, saying never read it, or what nobody's was... read it? I like I was read it. Yeah, I mean, I haven't either. We saw, we saw it has two reviews on Amazon. It has six ratings total, which means you know you just have to hit the star. I don't think anybody's read this book. That's not his family. I don't think anybody's read it. Oh, but he, it, it came out last year. I remember him doing. A, I saw a couple of articles doing a little press for it, but I'm like like what compelled this man to write a book like who who wants to read the jeffrey Loria story was it the secrets of being an owner was that the book from memory or something along those lines i can't actually recall the the, the main topic i don't area. know dude i remember one year it was the year when they made the big blue jays trade it was the year after uh so it was 2013 and he had come out with his whole list of like why you you know how to be a marlins fan similar to like sherman infringing on that territory yeah. And I was like, you know how I'm a fan? I'm going to cancel my season tickets. That's the how I'm a fan, Jeffrey Laurie. Kiss Here's the ass. name of the book. From the Front Row, Reflections of a Major League Baseball Owner and Modern Art Dealer. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my days. Oh, the sculpture's still there. There's an entire rolls off the tongue. home run sculpture. <laughs> yeah. I hope he was a better art dealer than he was a, uh, an owner. That's That's all I can say about that book. Boy, oh, boy. Peter, you do a fantastic job, man. Uh, if you guys want to uh, get your Marlins coverage, even if it's a rough start this season, this man, he can put a great uh, a great reaction to all of it. Peter Pratt, at Miami Marlins, underscore UK, locked on Marlins host. Go check him on out. Peter, appreciate the time, man. Thank you so much. Thanks, Peter. Guys. Please see you guys.